you know, it, it, we are in the busiest part of the year right now. Um, yeah. I know that we were also, yeah, getting getting situated from the pandemic at work, still getting used to working at home, and yeah. I had just become a TL not too long ago. Yeah, yeah, I remember, I remember you saying something about that. But yeah, it, so what happened was is that we, we were supposed to like infiltrate like Kang's, Kang's base, and we, we really took it too far and ended up bringing like most of his security force down on a just do like really bad planning and there was this giant he's like a marble entity he's this big like yellow worm thing and he's he's like an arch enemy of Kang and he just wants to eat like all of no it things. wasn't a worm thing it was a crystal man no you said he, you, the picture that you showed me he's like a big giant like yellow snake worm thing starts with like I actually I don't even know his name uh, it's but he uh, he was like floating around out, out in the ether trying to get in and Kang had like a big shield and my little character got fed up with what was going on and so he like he, like took down the shield that was protecting all of that and the thing just came in and ate No, it was Alioth. Yeah, what is that thing? Oh, he wasn't even the... The crystal guy was a different dude. Yeah. Anyways. So you're saying, you're saying that Jake... The there there he is. He's a purple cloud, cloud monster. Anyways. Um, so basically, we... Recap everything since we just started the recording. Um... We entered into uh, Chronopolis, uh, started talking to, um, saw the, the vast expanses of Chronopolis, and there were many other ones, decided on our reality number, which is 100,000, uh, and found out that King has created many Chronopolises, and that this one represents about a spread of 100 universes, 100 to 150 realities and their timelines. Um, Jordan has decided to play as, who was it again? Adi Lomo. Adi Lomo. Which I just decided he's, he's working on his, his hero name. He's not sure of it yet, but he's, right now he's going to go by the Umbral Knight. Nice. Uh, and then we've got Aaron, played by uh, Josh Asher, and hopefully Polarizer, who's an old character brought back in, uh, because tragically, uh, two mainstays, Autopsy, and um, Pangea both died in a nuclear explosion. Um, so, uh, to stop Doctor Doom's conquest of the whole world, um, uh, the heroes are trying to figure out a uh, way to go about it. And uh, during all of this uh, last episode, they survived a nuclear apocalypse. This episode, they found out their reality had been rewritten. And uh, at the end of the last episode, that actually happened. And then, yep. then they have uh, s also seen an opening to Chronopolis, and that's where we're at. Um, anyways, so um, this, <clears throat> this vast expanse of land is before you. Uh, Mantis has explained that um, the reality situation to you and your hovering platform passes by more of these openings uh, as you zoom forward uh, hovering not far above the uh, metallic streets um, passing by chariots 1930 automobiles and hover cars um, you realize as you go in closer and closer uh, that time progresses forward uh, and now you're into the 1800s, you see uh, steam engines passing by and uh, crews um, building uh, gilded uh, city halls. Um, and then uh, at points you even witness Kang soldiers, the ones that you saw in the Kang War itself, his battle armor, his power suited um, battle armored uh, 
soldiers with their laser weaponry and their um, laser uh, melee weapons. Yeah, it's everything lasers. Everything lasers. Um, <clears throat> the suits that give, gifted them uh, in abilities beyond, far beyond any normal humans, uh, overwatching some of these people uh, in their primitive societies comparative to what they themselves possess. Do you have anything else that you want to say to Mantis before you um, get in any closer? So, uh, basically, we just make small talk and, and ask her how she came to work for Kang. She, uh, I mean, if you try and engage her in uh, much, uh, you find that she doesn't really um, speak uh, in extended um, amounts. Uh, except for to answer questions that you uh, present to her. Um, but as you ask her uh, uh, how she became working for King, um, uh, she tells you that, uh, she says, uh, this one began working for uh, the Emperor King after our reality was conquered by him. Many of those individuals that you are familiar with in your own time, or, and she kind of pauses for a second and thinks about what she mean, meant to say, well, before the destruction of your own time, were killed in a conflict with the Skrulls. King... Uh, conquered our world from the scrawls and brought it with it under his empire and thus um, found and recruited me or recruited this one so that she did not have to continue down the path of the celestial Madonna Uh, which, uh, none of that should really make any sense to you, um, since you don't even really know what the Celestial Madonna is, but... I'm not my head. <laughs> Very serious. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, as I, you... I am sorry to hear about your reality. <laughs> the... The reality from which she comes from is fine now under the rule of Emperor King. And as she says that, uh, you come forward further and you are passing over what looks to be a replica of the Brooklyn Bridge. Um, some people in like uh, 1940s black, all black suits and hats like step out of the way and nod to you as you pass by. And then um, there is a massive purple cloud that blocks out the artificial light that seems to or the the it's not even artificial there's always a a, a, a light coming out from the outside of the dome the, gl the clear almost transparent dome um and uh but there is no sun or star uh so as the light is blotted out this purple cloud passes over top of it batters against the dome everything shakes for a second uh and everybody else looks up and then looks away from it and just keeps on going and then the, the cloud passes by. And uh, at that, you pass by what looks to be the World Trade Centers, uh, the ones that do not exist in the real, the original ones. Uh, and then you hit a uh, curving path of which the, uh, the hover platform that you're standing on like uh, seems to almost hook to, I mean, like a gravitic, effect um and you can feel kind of like a tension pulling you down along with the board and you zoom up and around across these graceful spires all of which seem to be 
designed more for the effect than any sort of real habitation. Um, but you notice people come in and out of, of this structure, some of which seem to be too thin to be capable of more than a, maybe a, a small single bedroom apartment. Um, but they stand towering over top of the skyscrapers of which you're familiar with. And you keep going up, up, up. At this point, you pass the elevation of the tallest mountains, and you continue your path upwards. This, the whole span of this has maybe been about ten minutes at this point. So you're, you're seeing stuff flash by. Uh, though you were going a little slower when there were people around, but um, honestly, the population density that you seem to be on the streets is quite small. She looks at you and she says, Mantis says, uh, Sir, uh, Aaron, you are about to be uh, within the presence of the Emperor himself. Please remember to maintain your respect. Uh, and at that, when she says that all of that, you realize that she really seems to have no idea who you are. Um, and as you say that, uh, as she says that, um, roll intuition. Okay. I, I don't know anything. Okay. Um, you, uh, you know, just kind of look at her and nod, um, or don't, whatever you would like to do. Uh, but, uh, you do glimpse flying past you a figure in metallic armor carrying a staff, flying past with a red cloak on. Uh, and the both of you sort of make eye contact for a second as your metallic masks face each other. And uh, there is an eerie sense of looking in the mirror uh, as uh, the, the two of you pass by. So it's me from a different universe. Good, good to know that King... Uh doesn't hold a grudge because you know since I whooped his ass last time we met <laughs> personally right. so uh, you zip up further you pass by uh, some sort of pinkish glowing dome that seems to have a garden within and you keep going up to the very top of um, the spire um, and up to a, like a teardrop shaped dome uh, golden like the rest, but with a glass top. Um, orbiting around it is a, a orb that gives off light and intense heat um, that um, is uncomfortable for a second, um, but as you come up closer, it seems to dissipate somehow. And um, you enter inside of the globe. Uh, as you fly up onto the platform, uh, it stops right at the edge of the glow uh, at this uh, glass um, glass conical, rounded conical shaped structure of which you mantis uh, raises a hand and gestures for you to enter it, and um, you are able to. Uh, step through. I'm going to turn on my camera so you guys can see my crazy gestures. Wonderful. I'm excited. You want to show, I can turn mine on. Yes. I would uh, turn on mine, but I'd have to plug in my USB splitter and disconnect my headset. Hey, Alex. Uh, so, Polarizer, you are on this platform with Aaron. Uh, you've been here the whole okay. time. Yeah, did you want to ask the bug antenna lady any questions? No, but every time she turns, I'm going to like reach out like I'm trying to touch her antennas. <laughs> <laughs> did she react at all? Um, the Towards the end of the trip, Polarizer comes close with his giant bear paws. And they, like, have just giant massive claws on the end of them. <laughs> As they come in real close to hitting one of the antennas, it moves out of the way. <laughs> no. 
Um, and uh, yeah, so she gestures, uh, and you, uh, it, she gestures at a solid glass structure. Are we going? I uh, I look over at at polarizer, and I'm like, okay, so I'm not sure how this is gonna go, but last time I saw this uh, king guy, we we weren't having a good time. When was the last time you saw him? When he was trying to conquer the universe we were in, and I was dropping ranks to take down a shield so everybody could take damage. I think it was Kang War, Jay. Kang War? That's yeah. right. So, uh, just for Alex's and everybody else uh, reference, um, in canon, we have seen Kang once, which was a team up in Cleveland, which we did not actually get to finish, but they teamed up to stop. Delilah from destroying reality, our reality, with Kang, um, and, or not Delilah, and Kra from destroying reality. Uh, that was Daybreak and uh, I think it was Agamemnon. But I think so yeah, uh, it was the it was the and people. yeah and Mister Immortal, our Captain Immortal. Or Captain Righteous, that's it. So that was the last time, canonically, that this universe has seen him. And then before that, the big one, well, for everybody in the world, was when Kang took over the whole world, beat up everybody, um, and then they uh, almost all died to the master of the world <laughs> while, <laughs> while trying to take over his defense systems to shoot down his satellite. Uh, they managed to shoot destroy Damocles' base, um, and bring uh, King crashing down, and then they fought him with his depowered armor suit um, and weakened battle systems in a one on one, one versus many fight, where uh, them and Captain America beat him, uh, beat him down. Um, he wasn't. He wasn't that weak back then, because. When I dropped ranks in that fight, I'm pretty sure I was doing shift 150. No, that was that. By that time, we had already added the extra ranks. Had we? For some reason, I thought... I nope, we added them. We added them after you one-shotted a giant uh, Atlantean gorilla monster at the very beginning of King War. Oh, yeah, that's right. When, uh, yeah. when they were attacking Canada. Yeah, when they were attacking Canada. <laughs> I remember that very well. <laughs> Jacob was like, Josh exposed that. <laughs> that flaw in the <laughs> system. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, I mean, he was, he didn't have access to all of his equipment. He had his shield, though, at full power. He had taken a little bit of damage, if I remember correctly. Not a lot. Mostly his shield took it for him. And wasn't it Celestia who got the final hit on him? And I don't think he had anything other than his sword, did he? Oh, he had his glove blaster, so he couldn't pull out his... And I think we damaged those. I think that was... So... Like, like, like you, you said... It was a tough fight, game. though, but... I mean, you guys... Uh, not as tough as the Master of the World, so... Nothing's as big as bad as that. <laughs> yeah, there has been, I think. I think there's been a few. That's been as bad as that, <laughs> but... Taxi. Yeah, nothing... Nothing is long... Nothing that took so long... <laughs> All right, but um, yeah. So the last time Aaron saw him was uh, uh, like in the ruins of a small town, I think, in Maryland, wasn't it, or something like that, or I don't remember where it was. And I thought we were fighting over Russia. Mm, I don't think so. You fought in the ruins of a city. Yeah. Yeah, I think it was somewhere in that area. But uh, and and Aaron was the one of the members that helped take him down. I think we a few people got knocked out in that fight, but they won. Um, I think Tycho got yeah. taken out. Otherwise, King would have died. Yep. Well, you say it like that, but it was more like a uh, two hundred ton. Piece of his spaceship, she like slammed. <laughs> yeah, it was more like a two hundred ton piece of granite. <laughs> Oh, 
So, um, yeah. Po um, Polarizer, Aaron gives you that quick rundown somehow, telepathically, as you're coming through. And as you uh, step through, you enter... Um, you enter a large... Uh, A large open uh, room uh, with blue platform, uh, like blue squared marble underneath. Um, and there are two thrones sitting on top of a levitating platform with levitating stairs coming up to it. Um, there are a number of guards, all with um, strange uh, trident-like images, and they are all wearing... Uh, they all seem to have a uh, blue skin of a like, um, but you know that that is the same sort of cloth armor that uh, Kang wears. Uh, next to, uh, on that platform, there are, as I said, two thrones. Um, and well, there is one, which is the familiar green, purple, and blue figure of Kang the Conqueror. And next to him is a um, maybe unfamiliar form to you um, of a woman in uh, yellow uh, and green sort of armor uh, and a like a, a like a dark reddish brown hair um, who sits next to Gang. Do we have a photo of that person? Gotcha. I could find a better one, I'm sure, but I'm not finding it at the moment. Doesn't look super intimidating. Uh, other than the guards and these people, um, here she is. Here's a better one. Uh, there you go. Other than the uh, guards and these two individuals, um, there seems to be no one else. Uh, he, uh, gestures and, um, to, to move forward in front of the throne. He is reclined, uh, and has sort of one hand propping up his chin as he, uh, leans backwards into the chair. Um, uh, he says... Greetings, Aaron. I see that you have come on the invitation of Kang. Do you know what I have called you here for? I assume it has to do with the recent developments in my reality. He smiles and looks at you and he says, you're right, quite right. And do you have any idea why a conqueror like myself would have any interests in what goes on in your reality? I have a few ideas, but I'd rather hear it from you yourself. He's, he kind of uh, smiles and stands. Uh, the woman who you, uh, I think, probably know... Um, is Ravona and uh, he says uh, you know he, he, as he smiles and stands, he says excellent for I do not have the time nor the interest in dealing with your lacking abilities 
and he uh, gestures over to the window. And as you look over at it, uh, you notice that uh, it is like the like a cosmos looking scene, uh, not the the familiar appearance of um, that. Oh, not well, not the not the strange appearance of that um, that Chronopolis that you'd seen before. Right. And he says, um, "You, your reality was of particular interest to me. One of the few that I have come in contact with that could face my might." And for once, I thought I had found an interesting, an interesting challenge for a man like myself, a man that controls all of time, that has reality itself at his fingertips. The greatest enemy of one such as myself is boredom. There we go. And... In my observations, you will find that I was quite disappointed at the protectors of your timeline when you failed so atrociously. And as you you watch it, uh, you look you're like looking out the windows as he as he like walks over to it and like l walks up almost like invisible platforms in front of it and stares out. Um, and you see in front of him uh, a like spin the the world outside spin, and it looks back at your um, at Doctor Doom's conquest of the world, basically His, the nuclear missile missile exchange. You see the the death of like Captain America exploded in the blast of a nuclear beam. The giant man who's like trying to catch a missile, another one hits him in the chest and he explodes and gets incinerated into just a skeleton that's propped up on the ruins. Um, and then he like gestures again and it spins forward and you see uh, Dr. Doom holding up a cosmic cube in his hand and he like raises it up into the sky. Uh, a brilliant blow flash of energy comes out of it and you see the world remade into Latveria. Like a, a massive worldwide Latveria. We're about to have a Latverian uh, cosmic entity of that cube ever hatches. <laughs> um, yes, I recognize that the heroes of Earth have failed and. Unfortunately, or, or fortunately rather, we have begun the process of beginning to reclaim our reality, and we will do. No, so I, I, can't I think you, you will not. Me. And he spins it forward again, and he sees uh, you, you see yourselves moving forward, and you have snuck inside of Dr. Doom's castle. And you reach for the cosmic cube, and at that point in time, there's a blast of red lasers, and it incinerates Aaron on the spot. Um, and the polarizer like looks back with um, do, uh, like with uh, daybreak next to it, and they see um, with a flapping cape um, a man uh, floating there, um, dark um, with, with blonde hair uh, and glowing red eyes. Um, and he has that, uh, hammer and sickle sign still on his chest. Um, he is the, the, um, uh, Superman entity from, um, Red Sun, Red Sun from, uh, the former Soviet Union. Uh, but he's got, he's not, he's got blonde hair, as I said before. Uh, he says, it seems as though the, uh, Robert, uh, Reynolds of your reality, um, with whatever his, uh, his Russian name has become, 
will uh, see to you quite easily. And I've attempted as much to oust Victor myself and the fight proved to be quite disappointing. Your Victor Von Doom seems to be uh, not interested in his own defeat. And he, and he laughs at that. And as you, you, you see that going forward, you see uh, a view of Kang's um, armies landing, facing off against um, a number of superheroes from your reality, um, who seem or, or and villains who seem to have survived, working with Latverian robots uh, and Latverian guardsmen, uh, f fighting against each other, um, and uh, then like the two giant, uh, like the, a giant figure of Kang moving forward, and a giant figure of Doctor Doom coming out to face him as they fight as if they're titans along the earth. Uh, and then there's a little bit a long time later and you see some of Kang's men plant a flag on a devastated and ruined earth and a, uh, a Kang the Conqueror picking up the remnants of a crushed cosmic cube from um, the gauntleted fist of Doctor Doom. Which is crushed under rubble. Or appears to be, at least. So you've run the scenarios. This is I not see. a scenario. This is your future. If I you, rule... If your predictions were so accurate... I rule you your reality's you? future within 25 years. And he looks, he, he swipes away again and he gestures outside and you see a ruined castle out front and um, near, very close to the base of the tower. So did you call us here to gloat or do you have some purpose for us? I have found this ending unsatisfactory. I have the timelines under control of over 300 realities now. And few have offered me meaningful resistance. Your future's Victor Von Doom was one such opponent, but he smiles out and he says I found him less satisfactory than my first attempt at your world so he's saying that we put up a better fight than Doom that's cool <laughs> I guess there's more of us a, probably a more interesting fight if you it was definitely interesting. if you wish I would aid you in the overthrow of your tyrant. In return, you may have your world back, and you'll give me his cosmic cube. As you're taking that second, he says, he says, follow me. I will follow him. Yeah, I'm, I'm not escaping his citadel now. <laughs> yeah, it's not like he's going to leave. Uh, he walks you forward and he, behind the floating platforms of the rooms, and he gestures open and he says, this is is the trophy room of Kang the Conqueror. And he walks you inside. 
uh, and you see uh, stretch out before him the relics of many uh, superheroes all before you. I sent a picture, Jordan. And um, he says, I am better suited for your objects than you are. Than you are. I think that if it is left in the hands of your reality, well, it will be destroyed again. Yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of heads in there. <laughs> is that Doctor Octopus's tentacles like all wrapped up? Yep. There's the hammer of there's the hammer of Thor there too next to um yeah 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 you can see the and he just has like like uh, Scott Summers like glasses is that the thing's hand in a in a case I don't know it's like it's like up above the hammer I don't know what that is it's really awful so really. My understanding is you're not so much as interested in my Earth's reality as you are the cube. In your future, you destroyed the cube in your battle with Doom. Roll, uh, roll intuition. Second guess. Polarizer, you can too, since you're here. Right. Why do I keep <laughs> destroying? rolls oh my gosh <laughs> a nine wow <laughs> that's a white it is <laughs> what's that alex what's that uh, polarizer Uh, it's under supplements in the Obsidian um, on uh, the Discord. If you need the chart, um, that's actually a yellow. Okay. Um, as he says that, um, as Aaron says that to Kang, there is something a little strange going on with this conversation, um, and it does seem like Kang. Is Kang is saying that he's interested in the um, the challenge that your reality has offered you, um, but he does seem to have some uh, particular interest in the cosmic cube that he is not mentioning. I'm gonna go to the bathroom. You guys discuss, or well, no, wait, no, you tell me what you were gonna say, Aaron. So I, I didn't notice the strange mess, um, or are you giving us a group win for his yellow? I'm saying he noticed it. If you you seem to have noticed it as speed, you as yourself. So if you want to go on that, you can. But I'm saying I'm kind I'm kind of confirming that for the polarizer. Gotcha. He's he's okay. very certain of it. You're just basing that off of whatever you yourself think. You know what I mean? So. Okay. I mean, basically what I'm going to be saying next, uh, Aaron will go, I'll accept your help, but we can't just give you a cosmic cube. I think you can understand that. But he can get a cosmic cube from anywhere else. There's like a million of them that he could like tap into the timeline to get, right? Uh, you're not there, but... Um... He looks at you and he says, uh, as, as he walks you down past the head, the, the hall of heads, basically, at the end, and, uh, he looks over at, and you look over at one of them and there is your head, uh, and a polarizer's head mounted on a, a stick nearby, and he glares at the two of them as you two are standing next to him. Can I use my alter reality alteration and like add a spike with his head on it beside ours? <laughs> yeah, sure, go for it. 
I mean, he might have a few of those trophies of his own head for real. <laughs> he's killed. His, he's killed. He killed all the other kings. Make a roll, Alex. Oh, I'm getting that pulled. Oh. Takes a second on my phone. What's your rank? Nice. It's a yellow. Oh, that's a yellow. Yeah, yellow. Okay. Um, for a second, uh, a, a a a new space opens up, and King's head appears there, and he kind of looks at it, like almost taking a like he's like, wait a minute, what? Like his head going, it kind of like whips over, uh, almost comically at it, and then it disappears, um, very quickly because something about this area, um, you notice it's. The whole of this area seems to be very hard to manipulate the reality of. Um, uh, Polarizer is really smart, right? He has a high reason. Yeah. So you think that it might have something to do with the nature of this place being outside of all reality and all time? So, um, and the room itself seems to be extra difficult. Um, but... Either way, for a second there, the head pops up, and everybody just sees it, and they like, look at King's head on there, and then it blinks back out of existence, and he says, um, you're not in the position to no- negotiate if you don't wish to meet my demands, then you, well, I suppose your reality will continue on into the future of which should be expected of it. And he walks forward and he says, take a minute between the two of you. Uh, You are the only ones here to decide the fate of your timeline. And this decision should not be taken lightly. Spend some time in Chronopolis. You might enjoy yourself. And he, uh, as he, well, you walk to the end of the hallway, back towards the throne room, um, he steps through, and as you two follow him out, uh, you are now at the base of that gold tower. And I will be right back. I'm going to go to the bathroom. Drink two cups of tea. I'm going to be right back as well. I hear your voice, buddy. It's been a while, hasn't it? Yeah, it's been a minute. How you been? Doing okay. Rachel and I, we uh, we moved up. We're outside of the Philadelphia area now. Oh, wow. I I got my uh, master's in library science. Looking to, to make a shift from my sales job now over to doing that. Being, uh, being like a teen librarian more, more full time, so. Gotcha. That's, awesome. that's, that's kind of what we've been up to. Nothing too much. Are you still down in Alabama? I am. Yeah. And you just got married this year, didn't you? Yes, yes, I did. Congratulations, buddy. Thank you much. I appreciate that, man. Yeah, that's, that's been a, that's been a busy year. That's for sure. Ah, but so you said that you were taking a test. What what is it for? What are you doing? Um. I'm still trying to finish up my bachelor's. I never finished it up, so um, it was a, yeah. uh, a science class. I just had a lab that I was taking online that I had a test I had to finish up today. So okay, okay. Yeah. And then, I mean, is that can you get all that done through like the GI Bill stuff? Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm using military assistance oh. to to pay for everything. That's so that's yeah. great. Yes, it is. Got a, a buddy of mine in my church. He's doing the same thing. He, I think he he started like a community college, did a year there, did a year at another school, and then uh, I think he got married, started family, and things. He's like, I got to you know, prioritize that. And then now he's he's in the National Guard, and he's like, you know what, I want to I want to finish this up. So yes, yeah, I get that. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a nice benefit. I'll say that for sure, for sure. You work on helicopters, right? Are you you're a 
mechanics? Yep. Yeah. That's correct. What, uh, what do you work on? I work on um, mostly Lakota helicopters, um, but I have done work with the Blackhawks and uh, Kiowa helicopters as well. Okay. I'm back. Okay. I need to... Uh, so, Josh? Oh, y'all go ahead. Didn't mean to interrupt. I just said my uncle, he just retired, and he was, uh, he was a Chinook pilot. Oh. All right. I've never had a chance to work on. Big. No, yeah, they are. They're huge. So. So, on our way out, you know, because he hasn't exactly said how he's going to help. So, we know what you're asking for, but what exactly do you have to provide? He kind of laughs at that. And he says, Mastery of time itself. And that's okay. when you guys separate. <laughs> Got it. Aaron goes and looks at whatever museums are around. There aren't any. You realize quickly as you, like, have a robot fly down, and it is there to direct you, that in a way, all of Chronopolis is a museum, but a museum that leads back to when things were there, or when they were made. Gotcha. So, you want to go see the pyramids, you guys fly over and you see it as their, you know, ancient Egypt at like, and it still has like the courts, like, like the, yeah, like 10 years after, white, yeah, yeah, 10 years after the pyramids were completed. Okay. So, uh, it should be while they're being created, and you can tell me whether they're aliens helping or not. <laughs> In this reality, it appears there were no aliens helping. The one that, you, but maybe in a different reality, you could find aliens that help build the pyramids. Well, Mister Bear Man, what do you think? Trust my judgment right now. I almost lost it. <laughs> um, yeah, it seems odd that he just doesn't get a cosmic cube from just anywhere. But... Cosmic cubes? Is that a cold technology? Um. They're cosmic artifacts. I don't know what else to tell you. How does one destroy a cosmic cube? It is, um... It's like... It's like eternity or something. You know what I mean? Right, because if they hatch, they turn into something that has like that, like class 3000 everything. Well, you don't know that. Obviously, it can be crumbled, because he did it. Well, can yeah, our Dr. Doom seemed to have done it. I'm just looking for a way to destroy the cube without... Give him the cube without giving him the cube. <laughs> um... You have no idea how they get made because there's no information available to you on it and there is, um, you don't, you've never really heard of a cosmic cube before. 
it got used. Actually, I think this was the first time you've heard of it. I don't think you guys have ever dealt with a Cosmic Cube before, right? No. Yeah, I don't believe so. But obviously it contains immense power. Mm -hmm. All reality all power. Done, we haven't done Secret Wars, right, Jake? With the Beyonder? Um, no, I don't think so, because you guys started, I think, right after Secret Wars would have happened. Hey, Normal Man is a Beyonder. He's one of my characters. I choose to play Normal Man. <laughs> What? Who's that? Uh, isn't that uh, the character who got turned into a Beyonder of Krikon? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Is he the one that won that? Yeah, he, he was the one that won that normal yeah, man. Brother. Yeah, yeah, your brother had that. Right. Anyways. Alright. Do you have any input, even though you're not there? Do you have anything that Aaron should consider since... Or, or the Aaron and Bear Man. I keep forgetting Bear Man's name. Polar He's man. a polar bear. Polarizer. Polarizer. It should be easy to remember. So I'm thinking, I'm thinking, Josh, like, this is just like Jordan thinking out loud. I think that um, we know that you're going to get killed by Superman. And, I mean, now that you're aware of it, you could, like, do something to try and, like, counteract that. But having Kang's help massively helpful. You can always find a way to, like, screw him over later on down the road. But, uh, you don't really have a whole lot to help with him. So, I'd probably take the help if I were you guys. About right. Point. Yeah, and maybe there's something I can do with the cube when it's in my possession to alter sure. the cube in a way that maybe it won't accept. Yeah. King's well, you've got Doc, you've got Mr. Fantastic, right? Like, he's a good he's a good guy to have in your corner. I did, I didn't tell Kang when he would get it. He didn't okay. ask when. I th I think we're just gonna have to try and pull one over on Kang. Oh. Seems like a terrible yet awesome plan. <laughs> I mean, well, why, you know, we gave Doom omniscience at some point and see where it landed us. I can't just hand the cube over. <laughs> you did learn a lesson, I guess, from that one, huh? Yeah. So, uh, what were our, when we were playing last time, we discussed our other options for Time Master. So yeah, I mean the theme theme seemed to be that you guys were gonna hop back in time and change reality, and stop this from happening. Right. The other option would be to take the cosmic cube from Doctor Doom and maybe rewrite reality again. I think that this polarizer pretty has reality alteration powers. I think like finding some way to connect him with, or, or, like, connect him with Mr. Fantastic and, like, find a way to channel his energies and then power it up with a cube, you could probably do some really crazy, like, time travel. That might be a good idea. Stuff. Yeah. And technically, I'm a wizard, so I, I think yeah. Jacob was saying, like, me and Miss Magus, um... Who's Miss Magus? Dormagus. Oh, okay. Dormagus. Uh, me and Dormagus could can technically affect time yeah. through through channeled not, not channeled but um lot, daybreak can just also jump back through time in gateway can right. she do that with her gateway powers yeah it's not that accurate though but I mean shoot I think you guys I think you got all the tools you just gotta figure out the right plan for it uh I mean, having, having reality alteration powers already, and the smartest person on Earth, and two of the most powerful magicians, you guys, you guys are in a good position. Okay, so, I guess, yeah, I'm not sure, yeah, I'm not sure if Polarizer agrees, but I think, uh, if we're going to consider Kang's offer, he's going to have to sweeten the pot. Okay. 
Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> right now, other than reality altering, Kang is the only way to go back through time and stay in your original dimension, in your original reality. Oh, gotcha. So we're trying to save our whole reality, not just <clears throat> our time. Well, I mean, right. if you if you switch, you, I mean, if you go travel back in time, you'll jump to or create an alternate reality of your own timeline at a different time. You know what I mean? Does that make sense? Right. Because normal time travel, because we do all kinds, there's all kinds of time travel stuff in media now, but normal time travel doesn't take you back to the time that you left. It takes you back to an, an alternate reality of the time that you left. Yeah, so you would need said either reality alteration powers or things like true time travel. Yeah. Right, and I think Doom is the only other person who has real time travel like that. Uh, yeah. It's questionable. I mean, I'm certain he claims so. flip a coin for you guys <laughs> of course polarizer is here too so uh, is, is polarizer letting Aaron talk for the whole earth yes <laughs> <laughs> no pressure so you have three options and you're going to flip a coin for the <laughs> three of them yep Either use one of your powers to jump to a different alternate, but very similar reality, right? Yeah. Or um, <clears throat> use your well, somehow get a hold of some reality altering powers and try to alter reality fight Doctor Doom. Or team up with Kang and see what you can do there. do like some variation of that too like Kang doesn't uh -huh. have reality alteration powers he just has time travel so you could work with him and then try to manipulate reality like he forgot or something try it. that doesn't work I you guys would know oh. that like you can't reality alter <sighs> somebody from a different reality No, he already doesn't belong, so whatever reality you're altering, unless you're in his reality and where he's at, you know what I mean? Okay. He would be almost like a blind spot in reality. Obviously, he's holding some cards close to his chest, because he only showed us very brief times, and yeah. I'm pretty sure, even though Russian Superman is strong, did I look beat up in his little image? Uh, I don't know. It was just Flash, you know what I mean? He killed you. Allegedly, he killed me. Yeah, Allegedly. Allegedly, King also conquered Doctor Doom's place, and he pointed out a castle that looks somewhat like Castle Doom. So, you know, if my shield's up, I'd, I'd have a hard like. I don't know how powerful the Superman type entity is in our Marvel universe, but he'd have to at least be doing. Jordan has no yeah. idea. I guess I, I know the Superman's that strong. And he's not there. So. Oh, no, no. Jordan. Jordan knows okay. Yeah. Jordan's never fought Red Sun either. Is, is Red Sun in the Marvel Universe for real? Well, no. 
And he's a DC character. Yeah, he's a DC okay. Superman, but you look that's what he looks like. That's what the costume's based off of. Kang told you that the guy's name was Robert Reynolds. Robert Reynolds. Do I know that guy? No, you guys that would guy? have no idea. Gotcha. But it's the, it's the Marvel equivalent of Clark Kent. But in the real Marvel universe, that would be the Sentry. Who who has? Who has? It's basically Marvel Superman. Yes. I'll send you so the we link. meander around, take a nice hot spring bath at the Roman area. <laughs> no. o- obviously, you guys know nothing about Robert Reynolds. He's never shown up in anything is it, except for as the Red Sun. So. Yeah. Right. All right. Well, I guess we uh, go back to Kang. I still haven't made the decision in my head, so we'll see what comes out of my mouth in a minute. <laughs> Here we go. It's Marvel, baby. <laughs> this is how we do it. All right. So, um... Um... Yeah, you go back up, uh, you know, ride the platform back up, enter the place... Uh, this time, instead of um, instead of the guards that you had seen previously, you see a number of uh, beings from alternate timelines uh, who are there as guards. Um, you don't recognize them, um, uh, but uh, King introduces you as you enter he says these are my personal elite uh, guards or my elite warriors they are the anachronauts do not mind them they are here to a to do as I direct them what is your answer hopefully you have made a wise decision. Unfortunately, Kang, I don't believe we can take you up on your offer. There's too much at risk. Having someone who has been hostile to our dimension in the past, giving them such a powerful item. <sighs> He sighs, taps his hands. Ravona looks at him and then, like, raises her hand. And the Anachronauts all draw their weapons. And she looks like she's about to say something. And he, he, he reaches over and grabs her other hand. And it's on the throne and holds it for a second and looks at her and says, Darling, they are here as guests of King, the Conqueror, the Emperor and uh, King of Kings. And as such, they will be able to leave as guests. And he looks at you and he says, Very well. Uh, Know that you have doomed your reality, but that is your choice to make. And he, he, he kind of does the, you know, underhanded gesture to leave. Before he even, before he has time to do it, I've already turned around and started walking away. I beat him to the punch. Got him. Got him. Time, time lord my ass. <laughs> <laughs> for, uh, as you turn, and then for a second, like, you thought you turned, but then you're looking at him again, it's like time got manipulated, and you're looking at him as he gestures you to leave. <laughs> <laughs> Aaron, you're. Uh, I need you to roll a psyche check for your to take petty damage. <laughs> <laughs> if I 
Hey, you roll a one. Oh no! You, you actually that's a green. You don't only take half of your petty out petty damage as you both recognize your each other's pettiness. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I there you go. Aaron's gonna die to Robert Reynolds, you guys. But only one reality is Aaron, so it's okay. Okay, so you guys so leave you back out the way you went. Aaron. As you look out, um, again, um, you exit out the portal and you look out you see the mini chronopolises and you look and um for a second you uh, you know you understand that out there is an hundreds of realities under the control of this uh egotistical emperor and you guys step through the portal to protect your own Side now. Yep, there you are. Meanwhile, Audie. Yep. Uh, you were you live in Dublin, right? Yep. So you uh were at um the Scarlet Sorceress's house when the bombs fell. Okay. And uh uh as you exited from the home. Uh, uh, you are, no, you're not even exited from the home. You're thrown from, from that home and out into the sea, uh, as you look out as, um, uh, the places, as, as there is nothing left, uh, in front of you. Just a massive crater, uh, and, uh, the, a burning, tingling sensation across your skin and searing hot flames coming from all directions. Um, what the hell happened? Oh. It's like horrified, looking around. I, said, I, I, just, I just picked up the book. I didn't know I would do this. Yeah. I'm so sorry. There is no answer, and even if you try to enter back into the house, it is it was destroyed. So. Um, it wasn't the house like on a magic plane? Uh, yeah. Yeah. It, well, there was some sort of magical defenses that made it difficult to enter from the outside. Like a, a maze of sort of magic. So, but it's gone. Like the house is, the house is gone. Yeah, the whole island you're on is, the, it was like a sandbar island and it is gone. Yeah. You're, a little spit. Okay, yeah. so I'm just like, I'm just like, like floating in the water. Yeah, and slowly being, uh, what, what is your abilities? What's your, what's your stats, your attributes? He's like he's like a competent human, so he's got excellent fighting, good agility, good strength. Yeah. Excellent endurance. Your skin burns, um, as um Yeah, he's just like coughing. <laughs> yeah, as the radiation and the dust. Um He's like looking around. Is there like a big like mushroom cloud like over Um no. It seems as though you were thrown out after the initial blast. Um there is dust everywhere though. Um, yeah, I think he's, I think he's, like, really scared, and how far, like, he's, he's near shore, right? Yeah. Okay, then, yeah, he's gonna set out, he's gonna start swimming. You know, he's, he's really scared, he's like, I gotta, I gotta find mom, I gotta find dad, I gotta get home. He's, he's like, he's gonna try and make it to shore and try and get home. He tries, like, I guess his cell phone's probably Yeah, it might work, but you're not so sure. Um, as you make your way back onto the land, you look out, and then there is a gigantic flash. Uh, you, it, it's so bright it blinds you. You close your eyes, and uh, no, you, you you have to look away, and as you shield yourself with your hands, you can look through the skin and see the bones inside your hands as the light is, is so intense. Um, the shockwave strikes you as it hit an outer area of um uh, uh of dublin you're struck by the impact um and uh you're knocked off your feet uh, and 
you stumble back forward and um, uh, there is this just sort of a um, uh, and there, there is sort of this intense sort of um, uh, burning slight burning sensation on your skin so obviously I know that there's like as you see the mushroom cloud off in the distance You are, uh, as you're kind of trying to figure out what goes on, uh, you were hit by a burst of wind and um, flame um, that are, are shot forward. As you can see, a number, like the, almost all of what's left of Dublin, there's, there's just tons of fires burning, and the flames will hit you uh, as you stumble forward into the land. And it, 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 you know, you can feel your flesh burn. Um, and uh you are I think he's probably gonna have to dive back into the water. Okay. How much health yeah, do you have? Sixty. Okay, um yeah, okay. Uh make an agility roll. Okay, uh, so the first one, as the as you come out of the water the first time, the blast hits you, knocks you off your feet for 20 points of damage. And then you turn around and dive away, and 59 is a green for you? Uh, I think it is on, on good, right? Yeah. Yeah, um, I think it is. Uh, you are, your back is scorched by the flames that are fanned out by the pr- wind pressure, um, and you are burnt for another 25 points of damage as you leap into the water. Okay. Um, the radiation is intense, um, uh, but uh, unlikely to, to kill you quickly. So. I think he's going to, he's, since he's there in the water, he's going to summon um, his shadow dimension. I don't know if he calls him a friend, but he's going to summon him with the the artifact and and be like kind of like poke his head up just like to have someone to talk to he's like really freaking out about this yeah Um, oh okay and he's like he's like hey something's happening the the whole place is blowing up I'm not feeling so good and he's I mean he's I'm sure like his hair is like was like like scorched and kind of on fire yeah and as you say that uh, intense nausea hits you And you start to uh, vomit. Um, Which is really hard to like tread water and vomit at the same time. I'm sure it and is. He like, starts to like slip, slip under the water. He's like, help! Oh! Is, is he sliding under? Uh, yeah, let's see. Uh, you become extremely nervous and confused as you're trouble orienting yourself. Uh, you have nausea, vomiting, and uh, begin to have... Uh, I feel as though you uh, have watery diarrhea. Lovely. Yeah, so it's like the worst day of his life. Yeah. Um, maybe the last day of his life. We'll see. <laughs> maybe, maybe the last last worst day of his life. Okay. Um, I need you to make an endurance roll. I didn't know you were a normal person. Okay, you managed to not um, pass out in the water, and uh, you pull yourself back up onto the surface. The creature grabs you and kind of surrounds you for a little while, and uh, you lay there f- as you then pass out. Um, yeah. You wake up in a horrible pain, 
um, and uh, in and out of uh, um, in and out of rest um, unsatisfactory rest repeatedly um, as you kind of feel the 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 world around you being destroyed. Yeah. I think he's just kind of like floating in the shallows. Uh, no, it's uh, pulled you onto the land and has, it, has okay, surrounded you. Kinda, yeah. Kinda, it's like, it's like taking up like position around me. There you go. Um, I'm going to call, I call, uh, the name of our entity. And I think it is, and it might change. He's still trying to find like the right fit for it, but right now he's going to call it Gorgon. Okay. Um, you pull yourself into town and, um, the, you know, you, you're stumbling as, um, and you're dying, you, you feel like you're dying of thirst, uh, and you smell terrible as, uh, the, the gastrointestinal cramps and diarrhea have uh really affected you um and um you stumble deeper (laughs) you stumble deeper into the irradiated craters of dublin and uh the burning buildings all around you um most people are the there's few people left that are screaming in horrible agony uh some that have the skin is like sloshing off um, from the burns, and uh, you walk across this horrible hellscape, uh, and deeper into the uh, blast zone. Oh, deeper into the blast zone? Is that where my family? Yeah, yeah, they lived in Dublin. Dublin, so you're saying that Dublin got hit? Directly, like, multiple times. Oh. Wouldn't he? I mean, I don't know. I mean, it, has he has he figured out? I mean, I guess I need to see if he's figured out if it's a nuclear bomb. I think I think the vomiting and losing your hair and stuff would kind of like be a clue. If it's a thirty-one. I think he's probably not thinking super well. Um, I would say you've got a minus one or minus two CS two. As the symptoms of acute radiation poisoning are confusion yeah, and sure. nervousness. No, yeah, then he probably, yeah, then he probably does. I mean, he's not thinking super clearly, right? What's his normal reason? A good. Oh, he wouldn't have made it anyway. He needs a fifty. Mm-hmm. And I mean, yeah, is he so really gonna? Is he gonna abandon his family? No, he wouldn't abandon his family. Okay. You make your way through the. You hop onto the back of the creature because after you walk into the area more you stumble and fall face first and you just can't move anymore Morgan I need your help and it lifts you up and like runs off forward um creepy tentacles with and uh it keeps going um did we make you have to roll to control it no it was part of uh, well, I don't know. I don't remember us saying that. It was more like it has its own, like, personality and stuff. Cause yeah. Have stats for it, but it's it's kind of willing to work with it. I thought we discussed. Do you have the stats up on Obsidian Portal? I do. I put it under Umbral Knight. And let me know if there's anyone in particular you're looking for. Do you have the stats of the monster there? Psyche is good, is intuition and re- 
Oh, um, yeah, it carries you along. I think it was, uh, yeah, it's not a good creature. No, it's a shadow dimension. Yeah, um, and as it does, and you, like, kind of pass out, um, you wake up to a sudden jolt, and you see the creature, it's got its tentacle wrapped around your throat, it's lifting you up, and you look at it at the eyes as it, run, it looks to run you through, and it stops itself as you, like, kind of are staring at it da dazily. And then it like puts you back onto its back and starts going forward. <laughs> Gordon, what are you doing? So like puke again. Ugh. Yep. Um, and then you're at the house. Um, the place is burning, and the building is knocked down. It was not in a direct crater area though. Oh, nice. Okay. I think he like leaps off. Um, I guess he has some siblings too, so I haven't named them yet. There's not. Hey, roll me a four. Uh, there's Super. not. Um, well, you know what? Let's make a roll for how where your house is. That's how we'll do this. So that seems fair. How close it was to a bath blast radius. The higher, the worse. Okay, um, you've passed near a crater that, like the the blast. Did the, you say higher is worse? Yes. Oh, man. Um, <laughs> the crater. So blow up in my backyard is what you're saying. <laughs> the crater is, um, not far like across like like a block away, and uh, you hear, you don't hear any answers, but you hear like, like coughing and like, like uh. Kind of, uh, hey, hey, hey. yeah. That sounds wrenching, I'm sure. Yeah, I think he's really, I think he's frantic at this point. He goes like, like tearing through, trying to find some. I mean, if there's a blast radius a block away, I wouldn't have a house. No, that your house was knocked down and the place is on fire. Yeah, I mean, the, the you were within, you're outside of the blast rate, like, you're outside of the crater itself, but you, your place was hit by the fire, the burn, the burning sensation, the fire, it is, yeah. and it's, it's only, you, you popped out of that place, you popped out of the magic dimension maybe 15 minutes, 10 minutes after the first blast hit. So you are, like, you, in all actuality, Yachty should be dead, but, um, uh, you were protected all from the blast, right? Because you were in an alternate dimension that you were funneled out of. But um, yeah, you're in a, you're not in good shape, and you're a stronger than a normal person, but not a lot stronger. So you're not in great you're not in great shape. Um, and 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 the second blast that you the first, the only blast that you saw, which was probably like the fifth or sixth bomb that hit, was on the outskirts, like way to the west. I mean, people survive them. I mean, if you look at Hiroshima and Nagasaki, I mean, people inside yeah, the area fine. live. But um, you are, uh, you look in and um, uh, the first thing you see is uh, two of your, one of your sibling has been like, uh, as you dig through it, you to the first sound, one of your, it, it, towards it, and you kind of like push some stuff out of your way, you see like a, piece of the one of the support beams has like pierced through one of your siblings as it was shattered and fell down uh the place is it's on, it's on fire too and it is coming down to burn up the body um oh gosh yeah he's like sobbing at this point i mean he's just a tear torn down his face the creature uh, and you, I, I think he kind of stops at that point. The creature like comes forward and like lifts up the other pieces of it, and moves it off to the side, and then yeah. scoops out um, one more of your siblings uh, who seems to have been crushed. Their chest has been crushed all the way by timbers from the roof falling I'm in on it. He's probably the oldest. Okay. Because he's like sixteen, and I 
don't think his parents are like super old, so I say he's the oldest. I'm gonna say that his siblings are like maybe like twelve and like six or something like that. Yeah. They had, they had two kids, and then there was like a like a gap. So so like like the little kid is probably like got like the like the chest crushed. And he's, yep. I'll say. I'm making a note here. And then um, the creature pulls out your parents. Um, well, and one, your mother seemed to have been outside near the wall. And uh, so it, like got hit by some of it, but is in relatively good condition. But she is, you can tell it's her because there's like longish hair still attached to the body. But otherwise, she is a scorched Thank husk. Goodness. And then um, the they pull the fa- your father out, who is struggling, the one that was struggling to breathe. Uh, and, like, the face is all burned up, and there's, like, like no real lips. Um, yeah. And, uh, you know, um, visible. Um, the skin's in relatively intact, and he seemed to have, have a number of scars, cuts, and bleeding. Um, from the wreckage, and he's burnt up in a couple places, but he still seems to be alive. Dad, Dad. He, he said, Come on, go on, we gotta get him to the hospital. We he can't. We gotta find a doctor, we gotta find a doctor. He's like, He can't say anything. No, no, I'm sure he's unconscious. He's, he's talking to Gorgon. Uh, the, he doesn't seem to be unconscious. His eyes, like, kind of slowly blink at you. Um,. Okay, uh, what are you going to do? Get my dad to a hospital. You look around, there's nothing. Kind of medical facility. Like, you, you realize there's nothing. Yeah, then I think get my dad out of the city. Like, there's got to be, like, try and find where survivors are going. And, and like, try and help. Now, Jake, this amulet of absorption that I have, does it only absorb, like, powers? Or is it one of the things that, like, absorb radiation out of somebody? I don't know. I don't see what the abilities are for it. Oh, amulet of absorption. Well, absorption. Um, give me a second. I'm going to say probably no. That's what I'm thinking, but I just I want to confirm. Uh, I think it could maybe absorb damage as it hit you. So, um, maybe you're not burnt up as bad as I thought you were. You know? I think that's viable. Okay, I'll, give him, I'll give him back to like 25 health. Yeah. i say he probably like gets hit with the first one and he's able to like throw up his... Well, the shockwave I think is physical and I, I think it was... Ener- was it energy absorption? It's just absorption. Like, like all of them. Maybe it's from the ultimate magic book? Yeah, I think that's what you were rolling on. Because I think we had said that it could do like powers but I, I don't... Uh, you need to make a roll. Actually, we're just going to say you took that extra damage because you have to make a roll. Okay. And it's absorption of... The, he turns into the material that he touches. Like absorbing man. Oh, okay. Cool. So, and, and, or is it like something that hits him? Like he can nope. also do that? So if like, someone hits him with fire, he can't absorb it? No. And it has to be a material. He can't absorb fire. You turn he, ab- he become he's absorbing man. You have absorbing man powers. Okay. Uh, well, you're, that's why I wasn't sure how absorbing man works. Your bargain bin like, absorbing man. Okay. Okay. So you make your you and your dad make your way out of here. Um, you pass out along the way, um, and uh, you make your way out to a small town in the nearby vicinity. Um, the, there is a small doctor. There, there you're, it takes you a while to get there. Um, and uh, you, because uh, it, it, you have to go a ways away. Uh, you head out to yeah. uh, Mullingar, 
uh, between Lof Enel and Lof Owl. Uh, and the hospitals there are flooded. And as they see you and your dad, uh, they one of them pushes your... Um, they put your dad over into another area. And they inject him with some stuff. Some uh, drugs. And they look at you and they say, uh, Sir, you're, uh, you're pretty... Uh, you're hurt pretty bad. Um, how do you feel? And they're like taking your, your stuff, testing you, and, and they bring you in. Uh, and they hook you up with an IV. You can't, uh, you, you're you in and out, you know, as you try to oh, okay. so give as much as you can. Yeah, I think he's, I think this is, this is like, like a big human. Roll, uh, roll, roll endurance. Okay, um, you wake up after a, about 24 hours, and they say, Sir, um, uh, your, uh, the, the, the man that you brought in, um, they hesitate for a second, and they say, Well, he's going to die soon. Do you want to, you want to go see him before he goes? Uh, you have trouble getting out of bed, and they put you into a wheelchair and take you out over to him. And uh, as you do so, uh, your father just lays there for a little bit. His body starts to go into convulsions, and then he he passes out. Uh, and um, I think I was, like crying this this whole time. They inject him with some more like morphine, basically, and uh, he. He dies within an hour or two. <laughs> and I think that, like, his body's, like, there. His, I mean, his mind's kind of numb, but then when he, he can tell, like, it's getting towards the end, he makes, like, one of those Peter Parker open and bows. He's like, Dad, I'm going to find you did this. I'm going to find the one who killed us, you, my mom, my brother and sister. Roll intuition. Would detective be a, like, help with this? Or is it just straight intuition? Um. Because I have the detective talent. Just intuition. Okay, so I think that's actually a green. Okay, uh, you over uh, here the. It's, not, it's not excellent. We'll give it to you. Uh, that's a green, yeah. Okay. You need a 49 on a good. So, um, you overhear the doctor speaking. He says, that young man, uh, he seemed to have taken a very intense dose of radiation. Um, he doesn't have a good chance of living. Should we inject him with something to ease his pain? Uh, and they're like, well, I'm, let's save it for the people that are more likely to survive. Oh, As they roll you back to your bed. Um... You wake up feeling a little bit better. Uh, you notice that you don't have any hair. Yeah. And, uh, uh, and you are capable of controlling your body more now and you know, being conscious. Um, uh, you can't, you can't really feel like you can eat and you have an intense fever. Um, but um, you reach over and you kind of grab the sheet from it and they say um, in um, individual has had intense radiation poisoning uh, acute radiation syndrome uh, seems to be holding up better than expected for over uh, over 100 rads um, should be isolated, uh, expected death date, uh, a few weeks. So I think I'm going to die in a few weeks? Yes. for a moment and he just 
It doesn't say anything. It doesn't do anything. Um, does it communicate with me? I don't think it does. I just kind of get like vibes from it. Um, maybe. Try to interpret those as best I can because it's a shadow monster. Yeah. I, I'm going to take his like six eyes like staring at me very intently. His tentacles wiggling. I'm going to take that as like he understands what I'm saying. He's going to help me. All right. <laughs> I, I, Seems reasonable. <laughs> yeah. Listening to the tentacle monsters and accepting their help has helped out the rest. Has uh, worked out really well for the rest of the party. Can't wait to see how that's going. Not Delilah. No one can have bad luck as her. <laughs> I don't know about that. Uh, <laughs> you just. <laughs> Escape from the hospital. Yeah. Okay, you do. You escape from the hospital and you begin your trek. Um, and then in a few days. Um, the goal is to go and find like like other superheroes. You can't fly though, right? Nope. So you are wandering across this Ireland and you head west when uh, you see someone fly up above you. And then in front of you, a mass of black goop with an endless number of eyes comes forward. You back up as you see it engulf a camp of a, a, a town, a nearby town, and people start to scream in hor horrible agony as the thing reaches forward and rends them limb from limb uh, in a gruesome display of blood um, and uh, bits that are thrown forward. Uh, you backing away as you look at something that is so nightmarish, it almost causes you to forget the past few weeks. Um, and uh, it, it then devours the whole remainder of the town. Uh, you flee back to the east, and you uh, realize that um, over the next few days, there are a few radio stations going on, and you've picked up a, like a, a receiver. You realize this thing is, expands, and it expands. And all of Ireland is being destroyed uh, and devoured by it. Um, Do people have any idea what it is? No, and it, it, nothing can hurt it. It, it, it. Even when you do catch a part of it and destroy it, it regrows faster than it can be killed. Okay. And, uh, does it seem to be made from the same thing as Gorgon? No. It's, it's, okay. a, it's a solid black gelatin like creek surface that uh, is filled with eyes um, and you fall back to this town of Longford uh, and there you meet up with some survivors of this nuclear radiation many people who had been really irradiated uh, passed like your father did in horrible agony um, and uh, so most of those that have been most severely Irradiated have died, and you realize that many of the remainder are soon to die as well, as uh, the radiation poisoning kills everybody eventually. Yeah. Um. As uh, you stay there, that you realize that the now you're about middle of Ireland. The cre the the mass comes to you, and you do you, well. What do you want to do? Um. This group of survivors have kind of. Okay. I talk about the key, like he puts on his, he realizes that people need to see like heroes like trying at least, so he puts on his like suit, he like suits up in the, the shadow armor, the shadow amulet, and he like puts it on and probably takes on, like finds himself a piece of steel or something, and absorbs like that, becomes like a metal man, and he's like fighting off, you know, this thing as best as he can to like buy time for people. 
I need you to make a fighting roll. Uh, and you notice as many of the people around you just kind of give up and let themselves be devoured. Okay, that's, uh, that's a yellow. Uh, you uh, get thrown backwards and pummeled, but you do not are not uh, devoured by this creature as you hold it off for seconds, extra seconds yeah. at best. Um, it is... Yeah. It is um, you look out in all directions to the west and the south and the north, and it is that is all you can see. There's not even a tree in oh, sight. Just, like this giant thing rolling over everything. Yes. Uh, it, is as, it is as if you're fighting the ocean. Um, okay. And uh, you leave uh, passing over some, passing by some people who are trying to drag loved ones away uh, in hand carts. Uh, and uh, they don't make it. Um, and there's just too many to save. And you go yeah. forward. A uh, few more weeks pass of this. Um, and I don't... How, what does Adi continue as he just sees this endless black monstrosity wash over Ireland? I mean, I think he feels... I think he feels like hopeless. Then in like true comic book fashion, he, he thinks about the autopsy. Yeah, he knows. Like they did, because he knows. Uh, there was yeah. a report that autopsy died in Belfast in a hospital room. Gaelic Guardian and uh, 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 Celestia stopped some missiles before they hit Dublin, but were destroyed in the blast. And yeah. Cork was directly bombed, and none of the no one there survived. Oh, so they even killed Sad. Seems to be. Yeah, he's pretty famous. Not as a superhero, though. Yeah. yeah. But, um... Yeah, I think, I, think it's, I think this is, like, the thing, like, he, he's, like, on top of the building. He sees, like, the, like the mass of everything. He's probably, like, got, like, a couple of few people up there. And he's, like, this is where I'm going to stand. He makes his final stance. He, he, like, summons Gorg, and he's, like, hey, I died. You're, get, you're, oh, you're making a final stand? Not retreating from uh, Ireland? Well, I mean, you, I've been having you fall back to the east, but the thing's hot on your tail. Um, oh yeah, no, I think he keeps. I think he keeps making a retreat, you know, as much as he can, because he's he's not gonna like throw his life away. I think he sees like he probably like finds like a little kid and like throws him over his shoulder. Okay. He's, he's like retreating okay. across. So yeah, yeah, you retreat across Ireland as this thing stays on you. Um, it doesn't move I that fast. It doesn't move that fast, but it always is moving. Um, um, so you are able to outrun it, but it catches up to you whenever you have to rest. And you have to rest because the radiation poisoning forces you to only be active for a few hours a day. Um, maybe you, You're active for maybe six to eight hours a day, and the rest of it you spend sleeping. Um, so that gives me just enough time to get out ahead of it. Yeah. yeah. Like I said, it moves pretty slow. Um, and you you make your way east until you hit uh, Dundalk, which is a port town. Um, there are no boats, though, at this point. Many people have fled in anticipation of this creature. Um, you and the little kid, uh, his name is... Um, um, Quinn. Quinn, yeah. Are uh, are there? And he's like, uh, Mister uh, Aubrey coughs a little bit. Uh, he seems to. What you've heard is that he has minor radiation poisoning. You've made it a lot longer than you th should have, though, for whatever reason that is. You're not sure. Um. But you think it might have something to do with the time you've been spending in your absorbed form. Um, yeah. Uh, being a metallic structure seems to protect you from the radiation poisoning worsening and so you yeah. spend spending more and more time in that form okay. I'm like, yeah, Quinn. how you doing buddy uh, okay Aubrey uh Aud Audie. yeah 
uh, how, what are we going to do? And, and, you know, uh, the kid is, you know, he's been through as much as anybody, so. Yeah, yeah, he's seen it all. I mean, he's two insane. two he's war like, orphans, yeah, basically, taking care yeah. of each other. It's like, Quinn. I'm not going to lie to you. You might not make it much further. But I'm not going to die on this island. Not by those things. We're going to make a raft. We're going to grab whatever water we can, and we're going to put out the sea. nods and he says I'll, I'll go get as much as we can and then you need to take a break and uh, as he says that you kind of nod and find yourself kind of like, drifting to sleep yeah. despite your best efforts yeah. yeah you guys basically tie together a bunch of dead trees and okay. uh, knock them over with the monster strength and cut them in half and he Quinn comes back with a bunch of food that he survived in a black eye. Um, and uh, you guys put out to sea. And at, yeah. uh, you make your way across, um, thanks to the endless endurance of the monstrosity. You are uh, basically able to paddle your way across the Irish Sea at a pretty quick pace, landing in uh, northern England. Um, like no, Northern England, like Carlisle, um, okay. Cum, uh, Cumbria, Northumberland. Cumberland, that's a good spot. So, um, yeah, you skip by the Isle of Man as you see that the black monstrosity has devoured the whole island. Oh, so it's crossed the ocean? Uh, it, that appears to be the case. <laughs> Right, Aaron? <laughs> Josh, speed? What? I said, uh, have you been hearing any of this? Yeah, uh, I guess the black mass you said has made it all the way over to my island. No, Isle of Man. It seems to have crossed oh. the ocean somehow. <laughs> oh, yes, yeah, somehow. <laughs> Nothing to do with that. As evil as it can get. <laughs> yeah, the reason it's on the Isle of Man. Is that's where it started? Uh, we'll, we'll tell you once your part of the journey's over. Okay. Yeah, right, good. So you hit up um, northern Northumberland and um, finally free from the creature. It's something as it doesn't seem to be here. Uh, you guys are taken in by a group of people who. Uh, England seems to be less devastated, though incredibly bad off, um, <laughs> and uh, than Ireland was. Mostly because of the black monstrosity. Um, didn't give like any chance to rebuild anything. You didn't give any chance to do anything. So yeah. you are uh, you are kind of taken in by some people who are helping others, um, and you. Uh, you stay in your metallic form though, so they can't really do anything for you. But they, you know, give you, you all food and water, um, and you um, make your way out of. Uh, are, are, are you you have a moment to decide what your next step is, and uh, uh, Quinn asks you what it will be. Some of the exiles who are still around. I don't know. I'm going to find some heroes. 
And he's like, I should I come with you, Adi? I mean, I can help you out and get food and everything while you're sleeping. Yeah. Uh, I don't want you to be in danger, though, Quinn. Um, did, were there any people here? Did they have, like, the ability to, like, take a kid in? Uh, yeah. Um, the kid, Quinn, seems to be quite attached to you, though, uh, as you've basically been with him for a few weeks now and kept him Trauma from... Bonded. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Okay. He'll say, uh, but I mean, you're. Come with me if you want. You know who. Gotta, you know what happened now. I mean, it was a nuclear exchange between the Soviet Union and the America. So. Okay. Okay. So, so yes, yes, so we've heard that. All right. Uh, I mean, I'll say that if you're gonna come with me, Quinn, you have to promise me that when I go out to to help people, you have to stay back at at the base. Okay. I need my guy on the inside. Me out, taking care of taking care of things for when I get back. All right. He says, uh, "I'm okay." All right. And then I think we're gonna like I'm gonna do some do some investigating, trying to figure out where where heroes are. Okay. Uh, are you guys doing any advertising in the apocalypse, Aaron and Polarizer? I'm sure we're just spreading by word of mouth, probably to nearby villages. Um, yeah, okay. So actually, some of the people there are talking about going to a place in Scotland. Uh, maybe, because, I mean, gas has really run out really quickly here. I mean, you're in England. Yeah. Um, but uh, they are uh, talking about going to a place in Scotland where a guy is able to provide them food and shelter. They say he's a magic, a, mag, a wizard. That's it. Could be Aaron. No, nobody knows Aaron's a wizard. Yeah, we do. No. Nope. No, Aaron's the wizard. No, nope. everybody know. believes Aaron is a superhero with uh, oh, a magic oh, oh, suit so of armor. It's a wizard. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. he's got like an Iron Man suit. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, and I believe Aaron was doing most of his work as himself, as. Were you still in your costume in the apocalypse, or were you just screw said screw it? And... I think I did like my mad like I I acted as sort of like two different individuals. You know, I acted like a mayor person, and then I acted separately as Aaron. Oh, okay. Got to keep my identity secret. <laughs> You're, you've done it the best of just about everybody. Uh, you know, having monstrous magic to hide my identity has helped. Yeah, especially when you get discovered and then you mind wipe everybody. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> okay. So, uh, so there's some. There's a group of people headed up that way. They they ask you to protect them on their way from any trouble they get in. Jake, since he has since he has um, sharp weapons and the the entity Morgan can make, he has dark force generation. Can he make like a dark force sword that I can use, or like a dark force knife or something? No, he doesn't have any power force. stunts. He just he doesn't have any power stunts. He just shoots blasts. Okay. Is that a power stunt that we could like work on together though? No, he's not gonna learn power stunts. It just seems super cool to be able to, like, make a Dark Force blade. Make something that's as strong as regular steel? Yeah. That's, like, black. You could have a metal, black, steel sword of the same material strength. Well, his Dark Force generation is 30. Is that better than steel? No. Yeah. Might actually be worse than, uh... Steel alloy. It's worse than steel alloys. Is it really? Yeah. So then I think like when he was first experimenting, he's like, "Oh man, this would be so cool." He's like, "Sword fight me," and it like made it, and he like whacked it and like smashed through it. He was like, "Oh, <laughs> this kind of sucks." Well, also your oh, wait, no. your creature can't develop power stunts. Can't. No. Okay. Um. 
Not unless we really... Maybe if you spend karma on it, I'll allow that. Yeah. A thousand karma is a lot for the bridge. Though. We'll be 500 okay. for a power stunt. Oh, did you, did you lower power stunt karma costs? I think it was always 500, wasn't it? Anyways, so what are you going to okay. do? Okay, so yeah, so yeah, so we head, I think we head up north. And, and okay. Adi's going to be on the lookout for... And you make your way up north, and then there's suddenly a new music change. Um, there is suddenly a wave that washes over you as you uh, of inner of light blue energy as you get in close, and everyone around you disappears. You look over at Quinn, like reach out for him as his hand reaches for you, and then he disappears in front of your eyes. And uh, the whole irradiated wasteland around you disappears and becomes uh, rich. English countryside farms and uh, people are walking around uh, you know farming in the style of early 20th century world and uh, living uh, idyllic almost like existences you're an Isake protagonist congratulations right 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 I think he's like super You see, just, like summon, summon his, summon Gorgon. Is, can he do that? Yeah, you're still metallic too. It okay. happens. It it appears next to you. Okay. And then you let go of it. What happens? You let go of your uh, form, your metallic form, just to see what it's like under you, because you see people around that don't look like they've been irradiated like, or burnt yeah, or anything. Like like most of the people you've seen for a long time have been something like that. And you, you vomit immediately, and uh, almost drop to the ground, as uh, you I'm lose your sense of. Yep. Yeah. Huh. So it didn't help. You know they're okay, but I'm, I'm still not. Okay, so I think he'll. Uh, you were almost sorry. all the way up to that place that they were talking about going to. Okay, so um, as you make your way up um, forward, uh, you come upon a large mansion area, and um, there is suddenly a rip in reality as um, to a pull a, a polar bear man and a man in a magic uh, Aaron, as you know him, uh, steps out of yeah. this rip in space time. And you guys have just returned from Chronopolis. There we go. Everybody's caught up. Okay. And uh, so just about that big black mass. Yeah, what, what do we got here? <laughs> um, so you remember the orphan that looks like Phoenix? Yeah. Yeah, the little girl. Um, that Ira. mass is her. That is her. And she was. What did you do to her? She uh, got killed by the nuclear blast and then started absorbing souls. And now she covers the island of man. And then um, Delilah was trying to help her turn back and was like, we're going to open up a portal to Ireland. So now she's also taking over Ireland. Ireland. Uh, she did Wait. take over all of Ireland. It's Ireland is a. Was that like no. was that like figure up in the air that you were talking about? Was that Delilah? That was um, Aaron because he also came over to investigate it and see if he could do anything. And then in true Aaron fashion, he was like, uh, uh. "No, he tried, but he got sucked into this battle for the Sorcerer Supreme and couldn't make it back in time." I got you. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. You guys covered a lot of ground last time. Yeah, I had to fight Doctor Doom and Doctor Lane. <laughs> So I was a little busy. Who ended up who ended up winning that one? Doctor Doom. So he has a cop.
Cosmic Cube. He's Sorcerer Supreme. He's the smartest person on Earth. Um, do, what else do I need to do, tell you? He's the Emperor of Doom World. <laughs> He's the Emperor of Doom World. Yeah. Yeah. And he won. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think, I think Adi is like... It's just like staring at you guys. It's like, Aaron? I'll be right back. Introduce each other. <laughs> yeah, what you see in front of you is this kid. He's not like super tall. He's like five foot seven. He's he's like like really thin. He's like sixteen. He looks horrible. You know, he's all burnt up and stuff. He's like so. If if autopsy is if autopsy is like Spider Man, he's like Miles Morales to to autopsy. He was like super inspired by him, and he found. Uh, well, you know this feed, I guess. Uh, Alex, he he found like a wizard's house, and she she gave him some like magical artifacts. So he has he has like a suit of armor, like a like a like the nightingale armor or whatever from uh, from Skyrim. He's got like that. He's got a big bracelet, like an amulet kind of thing that he that he wears, and then he's got this shadow creature that's like kind of bound to is bound to it. That uh, that's how that's how he fights crime. But he's, he's like a regular person. He's more like a like a wizard type person than a, than a super strong character. Gotcha. Yeah, I was trying to find like cool shadow armor, and the, the thing that kept coming up over and over and over was like that stuff off the of scuffle. Of that's, that's kind of what it looks like. Gotcha. Um. Yeah, so I wouldn't recognize you at all. <laughs> so I uh, look at you and I'm like, "Hello," and I'm just like eh, questioning. Hello? Question mark? Yeah. And he's like, "Oh, uh, yeah, I guess you would know me." Uh, know me. Uh, my name's Adi. I, I swam over here from Dublin. Aaron, it's horrible. Everybody's everybody's dead. Some, um, something with eyes just is like eating the whole island. And, and I've been, well, I got, I got some abilities and I've been using them to, to try and help people. And I heard that, that heroes were congregating up here. So, so I came. That's noble of you. Come inside. I'm glad you were able to make it safely off the island. I think he, like, asked a bunch of questions, like, what happened? What was it? I'm, I'm a, autopsy died. You know, I'm a, I'm a little closed-lipped, because I'm, like, I, I just got back from Chronopolis. <laughs> so I'm, yeah. like, um, you know... Stay in these two rooms. I need to go have a meeting. <laughs> but, but Aaron, Aaron, I, I mean, I know I'm not, like, super experienced, but, but I'm a, I, can, I can help, man. Let me know how I can help. I want to help. I'll, uh, I'll consult the others in the meeting. Okay. So, oh, I don't feel good. <laughs> he, like, goes and, like, throws up. Oh, so you're in your full human form? Um, well, uh, no, he's probably, no, he's probably, he's probably, he's probably he goes off and throws up, like, no, yeah, I'd say, I'd say he's probably, yeah. okay, so, so we don't know you're sick yet, okay, yep. gotcha, oh, yeah. okay, so, <laughs> I leave you in those two rooms, and I go to, uh, you know, the superhero side of the base that I don't quite, you know, I don't know who you are, I'm not gonna let you in there right now. Um, yes, clearly, what what material did you grab on the way? What material? Yeah, what are you? What are you made out of right now? I'd say he's probably, probably, but did, would he have found anything more durable than steel? Uh, I mean, he can make a, a reason roll and see if he found a like a good alloy. Okay. Yeah, that's not bad. Um, let's see what that actually comes to. It's a green. Okay. 
Okay, so his, um, the highest ranked material he can absorb is 40. Um, solid stone vibranium. Well, I doubt we're going to find vibranium, right? Yeah. But I think solid stone is... Um, viable. you could probably find like a titanium steel alloy. Um, but we'll probably say steel with our green. Which, remember, that um, makes all of your abilities 30. Your strength and endurance. Jordan. Did you hear me, Jordan? I'm sorry, say that one more time now. Your strength and endurance are 30. In this form. Strength and endurance are 30? Yeah. Okay. And your health increases appropriately. And you have 30 okay. points of body armor. Okay. How long do I have to be in constant contact with it to be able to, to use it? I would say that's 30 points of body armor, but it works as body resistance against any physical. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, like, yeah, because you're steel all the way through, right? It's not a steel coat, so it's not really body armor, but energy affects you like body armor, one rank lower. But you're, okay. you can't get cut through. Your armor can't get cut through it, right? So. Right. Yeah, because they still would have to be able to cleave a foot and a half of steel to cleave you. Like exactly. Like, yeah. So it's a little bit more effective than just body armor. Yeah. All right. So you um. You do not have to maintain contact, but you do have to maintain concentration. Um. Uh, your okay. your agility is also lowered. Um, your agility is also lowered by two ranks for being higher than good. Wait, for being higher than good? Wait. Every rank higher than good, excellent and remarkable, reduces your agility by one rank. So what, so, it, what is your agility normally? Normally it's good. So it's poor now. Okay. Not very agile right now, are you? Nope. Okay. Right. Kind of Aaron, polarizer. What? You guys are in a meeting room, I guess. Daybreak is there, Mr. Fantastic. Yeah, the people who are not the newbie that just showed up. Yep. Um, so I pull them all into the meeting and I tell them about the experience with Kang. I let them know that I received confirmation that Dr. Doom has a cosmic cube in his possession that Kang wanted it in return for his assistance with time travel and that the stakes were too high to give a someone who is hostile to Earth that in exchange for their help and that we're going to need to continue working with the other solutions we've considered. Reed listens to you. Daybreak just kind of nods in agreement, having had bad experiences with King herself. Um, no, Daybreak kind of like says, I mean, are you, are you sure about that? Uh, I worked with King before. It did seem like he would be willing to stop total annihilation. Um, 
he's not a good guy for sure, but I, I mean, he, we could use the help here. And then uh, Mr. Van Nassen kind of strokes his gruffy beard uh, and thinks about it, what you're saying, and he's like, mm, uh, we've had him many dealings with King, um, but... I don't know what is so. It seems that all all the whole thing seems particularly unusual to me. Uh, he's clearly has some sort of ulterior motive that he is not sharing with us. I think this is going to have to require more research or investigation, and we can give it time to at the moment. I I think you've. I can't say one way or another, Aaron, on this decision, but uh, it is what it is now. It, it, it is as uh, it is something we just have to deal with at this point. So, you riser, do, you, do you just look like a man with a polar bear head? I think you're. I, I think. I think I'm more. I, I mean, a bear is kind of humanish shaped, like on its hind legs. But... Yeah, I think he's more I'm like sorry, a. Is that what you're like? Are you just like a bear? He's a were bear. He's a were polar bear, if I remember incorrectly. That is. He's, he's correct. So sometimes he's human, sometimes he's bear. No. no. He's like, No, no, I haven't heard of him. Well, do we want to trust him and bring him into the knowledge of what we're attempting to do, or do we think he could be a doom plan? Do you think we're even on Doom's radar, Mr. Richards? He's uh, Reed says, uh, I don't really know if we have uh, a choice in being picky on who our allies are at this point. Uh, Mr. Reed, probably a robot made by Mr. by Mr. Fantastic. Reed does say though, as you are about to ping him, he says, "Though, I'm certain we are on Victor's radar, Aaron. Um, it would yes, be a bit of a surprise if he assumed we were dead uh, without having checked in on us. Why he hasn't." Acted? That is the bigger question. Uh, maybe, maybe he doesn't know we're here, uh, and we've gotten lucky. But I can't imagine that if anyone can ruin his his the world he has created now for himself, it would be us. He was surprised to know that I was alive when I encountered him last. So you've encountered Victor? Yeah, I, I guess that maybe I wouldn't have told them about the Vashanti. I probably would have. It hasn't been very long since that happened. I thought you did mention something to us about him being... Yeah, I, I, I think I did tell everyone that I encountered him. Uh, and that he's now also the Sorcerer Supreme of Earth. Then, yeah, at least that part. Yeah. Then we need to figure out why he hasn't come and stomped on at least you, Aaron. <laughs> yeah, because he waits. He did 
does really hate me. <laughs> yeah, he might, he might be, he might be competing with Reed Richards now for how much he dislikes person. Okay. So then you call Audie in. Ding. Paging Audie, please come to meeting room one. <laughs> oh man, I love that. That's what he looks like. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, doors. The doors have all been retrofitted with automatically opening for authorized guests by Reed Richards. <laughs> I uh, I just googled Werebear. If that's okay with you, <laughs> Alex. <laughs> Wear polar bear. I mean. Um, I think you're more afraid to change sheep because you I know you. My name, Adi, so. I feel like you're probably more concerned about dying from radiation poisoning than anything. Yeah, so that's why I'm dropping in in the middle suit. Stop, stop, stop. As he comes in, um, uh, we we usher him to a seat, and uh, we're gonna put him through the ringer to try and figure out his motive and who he is. <laughs> I like sit down. I, I look really nervous because there's like Mr. Fantastic and Daybreak. They get in the room. There's a polar bear man. Who else was there? Aaron. That's uh, it. Dormagus. Oh, Dormagus. A Delilah, yes. I guess, is there. Yeah, I don't. I don't recognize. I probably don't recognize Delilah. Or Dormagus. Or Dormagus. Or the Polarizer. Uh, Mr. Fantastic says, um, young man, uh, there's no need to be concerned, um, just, you know, take a breath, um, and relax, and, uh, put on this helmet, please, for me. Uh, uh, as he hands you, uh, as he hands you a helmet with a bunch of wires on it. Okay, we just, we need to know your size. Some bad things, but nothing that I think would be like really bad. Like, like I was cheating on my math test before, you know, before everything went to went to hell. But I, I, you know, it's just on the light on the helmet, Dean's as he says that, and he says, um, "It seems as though he's telling the truth." And it dings a red light. <laughs> Seems like he's lying. There must be something quite, at least he believes, is interesting. Oh, yeah, I guess probably like Scarlet Sorceress. Um, no, like or who knows? I mean, <laughs> he's a teenage yeah, boy. I mean, it could be anything. Okay, Aaron, uh, why don't you take the lead here? I will ask any questions that I can think of. Polarizer, feel free to do the same, sir, says Mr. Fantastic. Let's try to make this quick. I have a lot of work that needs to be done. How long have you had your powers? Um, six months. It is November of 2021, so. I'd say, yeah. Say it's like six months. In fact, he gives you the date. He says like, so let's say April, May, June, July, August, September. So he's, he gives like a date of like May thirty first, twenty twenty one. What drove? What drove you to find us? Um. Well. Delilah like Flinches. <laughs> yeah. Uh, is this like a full head like helmet? Is it like covering like my whole face? 
No. I think it covers your whole head, though. Ding, it turns red. He's lying, um, Aaron. What? No, I'm not. I wanted to come here. Help. Mm. I swear, I'm not a spy. <laughs> or, or trying to do anything wrong. I just, I wanted to help. Uh, it's, it turns green. Uh, are you sure you... How did you know we were here after the reality rewrite, says Mr. Fantastic. Reality rewrite? Oh. Yeah, I think so. Like, the stuff. What? Um, uh, people said that, that there was a magician up here, and I figured a magician might know where, where heroes were, so, so I came up. That uh, gives him a green light. He says, um, it looks like he has memories from before uh, reality was altered. So maybe he was up on his way here to join your uh, your community aid program? Well, we was just trying to save whatever lives we could, but it is interesting that he also was unaffected. I wasn't sure if it was. I wonder why he was left out. I don't know. I mean, why, why are you all okay? I would figure Dr. Doom would have gotten rid of you, right, Mr. Fantastic? Well, uh, he didn't seem to get rid of anyone. Uh, it seems as though he mostly revived people. Um, well, maybe my parents are okay. My siblings. It's like, like, like the first time he's like, yeah, had a little bit of hope in like, these. Uh, also, Jacob, uh, just a thought of mine. Um, you made the person traveling with him disappear, but that kid basically had nowhere to disappear to if he was going back home because it's covered with black masks. Yeah. Because that didn't get fixed. But nobody's well, told like Adi that Doom yet. Fix that? He, yeah. I don't think Doom can fix it. I, I, I think Aaron's right. <laughs> Wait, that's, like, that's like bigger than a reality altering you? Appear apparently. Way to go, Delilah. <laughs> so, um... Do you work for Doctor? Do you work for Doctor Doom? <laughs> what? No. The first, we should have started with this one first, Aaron. Green light. <laughs> what did I didn't even hear what was said? Mister Fantastic says, "Do you work for Doctor Doom?" Well, Aaron, why don't you, uh, in Polarizer, get him up to date. I will uh, get to work on this. And um, decide if we're going to go with plan A, um, alternate reality jump, or plan B, uh, alter reality. And if so, we go to plan B, how are we going to fix Ireland? And he pats you on the shoulder as he you know, stretches two legs out of the room and zoop, <laughs> kind of sucks himself away. <laughs> and does his, like, his, like, weird, like, <laughs> Yep. Yep. I, uh, I tell you, you can take your helmet off. <laughs> that, that, I think we've heard all we need to hear. And, um, I, uh, as he's heading out the door, I tell him, I'll follow up with you on that. <laughs> <laughs> I should, I should tell you guys that I can, I can take on like like a metal shape, but 
whenever I go back to being a human, I'm, I'm not doing good. And I think it had to do with, with being in, in Ireland and, and the bombs. I guess it's radiation poisoning. Um, and being in this metal form keeps me a lot healthier, but I'm, I need to get that looked at. I don't, I don't know if that's something that you guys can help me with. I'm afraid you go find a doctor. I'm sure we're all very familiar with the radiation symptoms at this point. So Nobody yeah. else got hit directly. Well, you guys di directly got hit, but you're superhuman shielded. So it wasn't as bad as you hit him, but... Right, yeah. but I'm sure we got people coming in with radiation sickness. Yeah. So we could probably recognize it and have a treatment set up. So we probably, I bet that Reed Richards probably just set up like a decontamination. He sets like you up a room pod. and uh, you go over the next morning to get that checked out. He has you drop out and then go back to the form. And then he comes and meets Aaron in private and Polarizer, and he, he says, um, uh, George, which is, uh, does he know your guys' real names at this point? Yeah, I've told him my real name. He says, um, so. George, um, and, uh, Tim, does he call you Tim or Timothy? <laughs> or, no, he calls you Dr. Weisberg. He says, Mr. Uh, George, Dr. Weisberg, um, I have some bad news. Uh, the radiation sickness has progressed quite far. Uh, and young Adi, uh, his organs are basically in a state of failure. Uh, if he spends very long outside of a metallic form or a different form, he will, he will die within 24 hours. There's nothing that can be done. His body can't even reproduce blood cells in his bone marrow any longer. Oh, jeez. Exciting. Um, I'm going to need to roll run to white in your endurance. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be right back. I need to use the restroom. Is that hard? That's what Dr. Wasberg says. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so, Polarizer, what are you thinking? And Jordan, um, slash Adi, we'll just say you've been caught up on the options that are presented. So, we will have another meeting. Oh, okay, um, yeah, with, with, uh, with King. Yep. Not with King, with the group. I mean, the different options of, about how to approach. Yeah. Them, right? Yeah, okay. Yeah, he feels like super overwhelmed. He's like, what? Yeah. Is that a table with Aaron and Mr. Fantastic? He's probably just going to, like, not say much. I put body. I, I tagged him with MC2. As yep. A, does that sound right? Yep. Okay. And now, just so just so I know, uh, Alex, how did how did Polarizer get his powers? Oh, I remember that. Do you remember on that one? I don't. I was he. What was he? What was he? I don't think he was a mutant. I thought he was no, an he altered was, human. I'm back. All right. I think, then, was, uh, I think he was literally like. But I don't know why he would have been a polar bear man. Oh, he yeah. doesn't even have anything up here. He just has. His, uh, he just has a a thing that says polarizer. Yeah, I was gonna say we we made him, uh, we might have made him on rolls. He was made on the rolls. Um, let's see. He was a Chicago-based alter reality. And, mm. I know that him being the polar bear man was like part of how he was rolled, but I don't know what would have made that yeah. in any case. I don't remember the background info on him. 
I don't have anything for him. I think you chose to be a polar bear man. I don't even have yeah. alt rea- I don't even have um, alter human or anything. But I think he was an alter human. So. Okay. So what's whether you have a reality alteration? Was that your only power, or did you have other ones? Uh, force field versus physical falls teeth. Yeah, I guess that is. Not he has a force field versus physical of amazing. He has a force field versus physical of amazing. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. And then he has claws and teeth of excellent material strength. I think that he rolled claws and teeth as a power. No, he didn't. We, I think we gave them to him. You don't think he rolled those and then that's why we decided that he didn't take, uh, Alex decided he was a polar bear man? No, I don't think so. Because claws and teeth are not a power. And claws only is in the player's book. So an excellent is like a like a kind of like a typical number I think for me to give like a, a, as like a yeah a racial ability kind of thing. yeah okay. Okay. I just remember that he was like super strong and, and wrecked the, the flag smasher guy and stuff um so uh, you guys are in this meeting and uh daybreak has said she can all warp backwards into a different time and Reed is explaining parallel alternate reality universes and time travel to everybody. And why that may... Oh, wait, you can turn into a person, Alex. I can't? This guy can't? Yeah, he has, as a human, he has uh, 30 remarkable fighting, 20 excellent stre- uh, agility, typical 5 strength, and good uh, 10 endurance. <laughs> it goes from this hulking bear to a twig. <laughs> so, so you were like a were man, okay? A super genius in either form too. And then um, there's also talk about trying to alter reality, um, and and fix it. And um, Reed Richards stands up at this point and he says, "Well, I think we have a few options. Uh, if you." Utilize Daybreak's powers, we could jump to an alternate reality past. Um, and perhaps in that reality prevent uh, what is to come. Um, since we've crossed King out of an option, it would be difficult to bring, multi- bring us back to our realities past. Uh, it's not impossible, though. Well, we'll table that discussion for later. Um, altering reality, if perhaps I could get some information on uh, the, co- the construction of the Cosmic Cube, my understanding is that AIM, once upon a time, built Cosmic Cubes. If we had access to an AIM base that survived the reality alteration, maybe we could get information I need to develop a Cosmic Cube. Finally, I had thought of something after... Um, Aaron had uh, gone and uh, explained to uh, Polarizer uh, the his encounter with Kang during Kang War. Um, what if we were able to recover parts of Damocles' base? Perhaps I could create a time machine functioning in duplicate to Kang's technology. I think the best option is to try and see if we can locate an open, see if the Damocles base or any of the AIM headquarters were opened. We can begin scouting those immediately. Yeah. And would, would, Tang, would Kang's, like, would his, would his, like, base put off, like, a chronal temporal, like, signature? No, it was, a, it was, wa- it was, it's rebel. Uh, and, and then, um, Daybreak says, um, well, we could also uh, make our way into King's base, or Doctor Doom's base, and take the Cosmic Cube from him. That is an option. I will say, the likelihood of my death in that timeline is very high. Bobby's eyes get, like, super big. He's like, how do you know that? But... Just be 
because the image I was shown looked like me doesn't mean it was me. But they like, did you guys like tell Adi that he's only got like that he has to stay in his that metal form or he's gonna die? I went to the bathroom. Reed Richards did not tell you, and uh, unless Polarizer or Aaron do. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, okay. let's break the news after this meeting. Rebecca says, uh, Daybreak, uh, as you guys are like, well, that's one option. She says, well, personally, I think it would be easiest just to jump back in the gateway and stop this from happening. I mean, is it going to make a difference if it's an alternate reality? It'll be the same to us. And she says, not if we stop them from dying, then it'll be better for them in that but, timeline. But everybody here will still be dead. We've just, we've just like, abandoned everybody here. Doesn't seem, right? Does it? Because, like, looking around the table. They're not dead anymore. I mean, I mean, some of them are dead, but most everybody's brought back. And, I mean, what are we going to do? It doesn't seem like we can win this if we try anything else I doubt King is going to let us copy his technology and I don't think uh, we're going to be able to out alter reality Dr. Doom I mean we've already lost to him multiple times Reed, uh, Reed kind of grimaces and he goes, I, I don't want to, I don't want, I don't know if I want to let this one go. Um, not knowing what I know now. And I don't know where Sue and my children are. says um, if we don't have the information on the from aim the cosmic cube option will take years and without King's technology I don't think we'll ever be able to have a viable time machine to come back to this reality's past and even if we do have this technology considering the shape that it's in the chances are not high and to be honest, I'm sure Victor is doing something with the remnants, the little bit that remained. Uh, last I know, the United States government had it under protection in a secret location near Washington, D.C. Um, I had done some research for them on the topic, um, but I'm sure Victor also knew that doesn't mean that it ha isn't there or accessible and he grimaces and he says it doesn't mean that I'm not suggesting we shouldn't do it uh, it's my personal choice but I understand that I would be asking maybe the rest of you to go to your deaths Well, he uh, he seems very hesitant to suggest it, but it's what he wants to do. I see. 
he wants his real son and daughter and wife back. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think that's, that's, people aren't asking, but it, 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 I think Adi feels kind of like it's security basically is just kind of there, you know, in the table, but that's, that's what he would go for too, is try and fix a real reality, not, not find an alternate one. I feel like Dr. Doom only had foresight through the successful implementation of his nuclear war, or else he wouldn't have been surprised to see me in the battle. Reed looks. Sorcerer Supreme. Reed looks a little confused. He's like, "What do you mean foresight?" <laughs> have, I, have I not already talked with him about all that? I thought I would have already shared it. Um, I don't know. I don't. <laughs> I mean, I. I don't know. I mean, he's been pretty involved in his stuff, but we'll, since it hasn't directly been said, I will say no. Okay. So, I... I and I, Audie I definitely I, doesn't I, I, know. I'm like, uh, Dr. Richards, I'm really sorry if we haven't talked about this in front of you before, but I believe that this originated from... Um, Daybreak's sure listening intently. <laughs> uh, from when Fu Ten... I, powers were taken from him. Actually, you're the only person that knows that. All this. Yeah. And they're like, wait, Futin's powers were taken from him, says somebody? I don't even remember how that happened. Like, we talked about it a little bit, but I don't even I remember do, who actually. stole the power I do, um, and I do how he ended up using it for a moment. It, so, so, quick recap, because I don't know, Alex, I don't think you were part of that. Futin had. No. When they, they both, him and Emet, teleported to the sun, Lan yeah. Futin realized he was going to die, transferred the power but to Lanthanoid then, at, that, at the moment of his death. Yeah. No, Emet grabbed Futin and they both teleported into the sun and died together. And Lanthanoid so was after yeah, Doom and Doom was there and Lanthanoid was there. Lanthanoid got the power. Doom proved to be resistant to the flames and escaped. Lanthanoid was basically yeah. immune to flame. Yeah. And so he gave him he gave him cosmic awareness. He had like three uses of it or something. Yeah, he could use it basically it was a limited ability based on your willpower of uses before you went insane. Uh was, yeah. and I think, I for most was, for most like three uses Yeah, for most people it would be about three. And he's still in the center of the earth. He's still down there drinking beer. Who, uh, who, who played Lanthanoid again? Hunter. Hunter. We need to have a talk with Hunter. He has a bunch of great characters. Um, but, okay, so yeah, uh, Aaron explains that Lanthanoid acquired the power from Futen and then offered it for 
something as simple as a wine cooler. Nope. Makes sense. What power was I supposed to woke up? Torch? Nope. I already did that. Oh, I was looking up Gateway. That's it. I so didn't even tell you guys. Does Reed have, like, anything to contribute to that realization? Does that, like, change anything for Reed? Um, no, he agrees with Aaron um, that it seems as though that his, his, that, that his reasoning is correct and that uh, he uh, has uh, clearly surpassed the limits of what his future predictions were. being Sorcerer Supreme was not part of his end game because that's just icing on the cake. Yeah, he does have the um, uh, the Eye of Agamotto now. <laughs> One sec, Charlotte's calling. Okay. She's saying that you guys go back in time and in the regular way and stop doom and just say, yeah, it's fine. You know? Yeah. Like, like basically have like an alternate reality that we like step into one where we stop doom as opposed to like all of this going south. Yep. What do you think, uh, uh, Polarizer? Uh, I think it might be easier to do that route, to go back. It would. And also... You could do it right now. There's a chance. Yeah. And we could, uh, we'd have more options to get more people to help us out. Well, that's Depending interesting. Like, where we actually... go. Off that call. Like in that reality, like once we stop him, then we could like come back to this one and fix it. Am I understanding what you're saying, correct, Alex? Yeah. Mm -hmm. that's, that's at least how I was envisioning that route going. How far back could we go in reality, Jake? And in, in time? So we could go back and just like give Lanthanoid the beer cooler <laughs> and like stop him from giving Doom God No. Awareness. No, you can't. Just because uh, I don't want to have to replay the last six years of gameplay. <laughs> Why not? What? What do you mean? Everything else turns out the same, it's just that Doom doesn't have cosmic awareness and he leaves everybody alone and, <laughs> and, and Doom uh, the, the Eagles don't win the 2017 Super Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> Was it just go further back and stop the beer cooler in exchange? No, they were talking about um, going back in time and making an alternate reality, stopping that the people there, and then recruiting superheroes from that reality to come to this reality, and then stop Doctor Doom in this reality, save this reality, and then return everybody back to their original realities. Taking the simpler plan and making it more complicated. Is there a way to combine Gateway with, um, I'm blanking again, Polar, Polarizer's reality alteration to make it so that a new reality doesn't get created? She can go back, get, Daybreak can go back 2,000 years. I 
mean, I, I don't think that Jacob will have it work out that way. You can do it. I mean, I'll. I would allow it if you want to go back. You just have to hand wave it. No, I'll, we'll we'll do it the right way. You gonna play through six more years of Marvel? No. I mean, you're creating an alternate reality. When you try to jump back forward to a different time, or you could stay in that time, I mean, it's up to you guys. So we create three new alternate universes to complete this. <laughs> yes. I feel like, I gotta, I feel like we're, uh, we're, we're the most powerful beings in the world just creating universes. <laughs> yeah, I feel like, I think, Adi, I think Adi's like, all of a sudden, there's like all the hair on the back, well, if his hair's grown back, I guess it has it. His skin gets all ripple, and he's like, oh my gosh, we could be complete psychos here. <laughs> he's like, this is crazy power. It's really, really uncomfortable right now. <laughs> I say, maybe you're not ready for these kinds of conversations. Yeah. <laughs> Do you need to leave the room? Uh, uh, Mr. Mr. Aaron, I'm 16. I don't think I should be able to decide the fate of multiple galaxies. Multiple dimensions. Uh, <laughs> it's more than dimensions. It's more than dimensions. <laughs> I would just point out that reality, one reality encompasses an, a number of dimensions. Thousands of dimensions. Yeah. So... <laughs> So not only would you be recreating a new reality on an earth dimension on a different number, all of its shadow dimension, its dark dimension, its alternate yeah. future timelines, all of those would be here too. It's Shuma Gorath's, it's yeah. Yep. 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 So, I mean, yeah, I guess No. Right, and that honestly, I think that that is the but, least likely. Cause we but Aaron knows people. where they could find one. Maybe. Yeah, I think I've worked with AIM a few times. Well, no, you know where you've, you've disabled a base with Pangea and Autopsy, remember? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, that's where we fought that little head guy, right? Yeah, the big head guy. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, uh, so I guess we should put it to a vote. Yeah, I think that sounds, that sounds like a good idea. And then we flesh out, flesh out. Delilah says that she votes for whichever jump backwards in time gets the most votes. So she'll wait for everybody else and then vote. Because she doesn't, she's afraid that if you try to realter reality, even with a cosmic cube, you won't be able to get rid of Ira, and she's worried about what's going to happen with Ira, and she just okay. doesn't want to have to deal with that anymore. So, um, I, I I think I agree with that. My vote is travel back in time, but I would like to attempt true time travel. Okay, so we got true true. Time travel. Time travel. <laughs> um, and then alter reality. Fix it. Is that what daybreak? Is that daybreaks? No. Nope. Oh. That's just one of the. That's make a second cosmic that's an cube. Okay. Yeah. And then polarizers. Time travel hijinks. <laughs> yeah, that sounds. Uh, it may make it sound a lot worse <laughs> when we flushed it out. <laughs> I don't know. I think we should all vote for that one. <laughs> all right. So, um, Reed Richard votes for true time travel. Aaron votes for true time travel. Adi. His fam oh, well, his family and Quinn have probably got eaten again by the monster. Okay. Um, but in true time travel, we could stop the monster. Yep. Uh, okay, and then... Oh, wait, I'm tallying up on the wrong slot. Okay. 
And then day rate just goes for time travel, expediency. Polarizer. Delilah will vote for true time travel since it's the one that's going to win. So. And, uh, we always have, have fake time travel as a backup. <laughs> the, the artificial. Because we still have to see if we can even get enough equipment to make it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's true. We, we've got backup options. As, as Reed sees the true, the copying Tang, Kang's technology is the uh, going to win, he says... So, are you all sure of this? I mean, we're either going to be facing King the Conqueror or Doctor Doom and attempting to steal something from them. I think I think we have to try. Okay, so we have two ways to do this. We could try to take it directly from Kang. Or, uh, we could try to go for Damocles base. <laughs> so, and this is Jordan says, so Aaron, uh, why did you turn down Kang? <laughs> Cosmic Cube created the world that's around us. Doom having it is bad enough, but can we really give it to Kang? Oh, he was gonna be more protective than you. You're right on that. Uh, yeah. So, uh, so what? What was Damocles' base, Mister V? Uh, he explains that it was a literal sword-shaped space station that um, could travel through time and blow up places. You may remember when Washington, D.C. was nuked <laughs> and all the people oh, yeah. killed. Oh, that was that. I was just, I mean, I feel kind of bad saying this, but I was just glad it wasn't happening to Ireland for the third time. I was kind uh, yeah, of a snotty little see. kid back then. You know? um, and, and so you think that you're saying that, that Washington has, the United States government has like parts of Damocles Bay stored somewhere? Uh, when I, you did some work for them at the time they did. But you think Dr. Doom has access to that same research? He is, uh, from what we're intercepting on radio and, uh, well, on radio and limited internet, um, he is the emperor of what is called Doom World now. Uh, what? Well, who's worse to deal with, Dr. Doom or Kang? Yes. <laughs> Precisely. I think that it would be a big risk for King to show up currently. I don't know if he's ready to launch his war on Doom yet, but it would it would happen. I mean you're saying that if we attack him, like he would that would expedite him to attack Doom? Well, you have to go into Chronopolis and steal from Kang. Oh, I thought you said that we were going to use the... You could do that. You could take... You could go after Damocles base. If... Yeah, I think Damocles base makes the most sense. To at least try and see if we can viably create... Or collect technology. I, I mean, Jordan 
just from my perspective, I think it would be super cool to like go and and get like a like a ten years later kind of thing, like return back to that plot line a little bit and see it. I think that would be really cool. Oh, like to revisit Damocles base? Yeah, yeah, to see it, you know, like ten years later and be like, oh man. I think okay, that would be kind of fun. so. I guess we're voting. Are we attacking Kang directly, or are we going to Damocles? <laughs> are we stealing from Doctor? Are we stealing from Doctor Doom to steal Kang Tech, or are we stealing from Kang to steal Kang Tech? <laughs> so wait, wait. Where is the Damocles base? Is it Washington D.C.? That was the last place that Mister Fantastic knows it was at. Gotcha. Yeah, I well, think I we're. Like, I feel like if we go to Doom. If we go to, if we steal Kang Tech from Doom, we could always like rope Kang into it to like, like say, hey, give us a hand stealing his his tech, and then we'll give it back to you or something. Whereas if we steal from Kang himself, we're just gonna piss him off. I definitely concur with that. I think the Damocles base makes the most sense. It's not gonna be undefended, but is Doctor Doom gonna go there himself? I doubt it. I don't know. He'll have Doom Boss. Those guys suck. But I think I think we should like I think we like piss off one like megalomaniacal timer if not like two of them. We've already spent this whole time pissing off Doom. Why not keep it going? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Finish keep going with a good thing. <laughs> Screw that guy. Uh, um Jacob's got that smile on like I can't wait to I uh I have to say that uh Del uh James said Delilah voted for t reality alteration, so maybe some more powerful version, so. Well, you know what, Delilah, you weren't here. It doesn't matter. It was still, instead of being four to one, or five to one, it was four to one. Four to one to one. <laughs> Um, I guess, I guess he wouldn't swing it. He is actually going to vote for altering reality. Do so wizards stick together? Uh, no, that's different. Oh, I mean, I'm a wizard, yeah, I'm Delilah. But yeah. he makes the, he says that he thinks that we should try to change what's here instead of messing with time. You never know what the long-term repercussions of time travel are going to be. And everybody ignores him. <laughs> That's a good point. Let's continue with what we were doing. <laughs> so, uh, noted. So it sounds like we have our, our answer for which way we're going. Yeah. I think so. I think so. Alright. We're going to Damocles Base. Is your map, 
is your power magic related? Yeah. speak with Dormagus. If you're interested, we may be able to make your skin condition permanent. Paul, make him like a metal man. I don't know how Jacob feels about this. How do you have a permanent metal spell? Well, I'm thinking like we just make the spell, because right now it's a concentration based, right? Yeah. So, what if we can remove that limiter with, like, some form of, um, ceremony? And then he just can't turn back into a human. Would I be able to turn into, like, other elements? No. I would say it's fine. Oh yeah, it's not. It's not an actual spell either. It's a magic amulet, so no, it wouldn't work. You could. No, no, it wouldn't work. Never mind. I take it back. I take it back. I I would say that you would you'd be trying to transform it into some sort of. You could maybe pull a soul out and stick it in a golem if you wanted. Has like some sort of dark necromancy stuff. <laughs> but no, I don't think you can make that spell permanent. I'm, I'm just gonna retract that previous statement now that I think about it. This is just Jordan asking. Um, is Polarizer able to use like reality alteration just to give him like fresh organs? Ooh. No. Now, I, I can't remember, and maybe I can read this in the in the book later. You could, you you could, but what you're you remember, you're altering reality is pulling. So if you want to pull out an Audie's organs from a different timeline and stick it oh, in this yeah, one, that's right. He just pulls stuff from other from other universes, doesn't he? Yes. Oh no, we're not gonna kill someone for Audie. Yeah, if you want to kill another guy and basically fix all of his organs. You know, no, you just have to, you just have to replace this Audi with another rea alternate reality, alter Audi. Yeah, I think, I think Audi is like now like really hating the entire concept of alternate reality. He's starting to like put that up there with necromancy as being like a really bad magic. So if you want, so, if you want to just replace him with another alternate reality version of himself, then that is doable. So... Or if you get a cosmically powerful entity to fix you, you could do it. Class 1000. I was going to say. Class 1000 or better. I know that there's a spell that's like healing. No. Can't be. Can't fix it. It wouldn't, it wouldn't be a standard heal spell. Like, I would need for the Vashanti to be able to do it. No. You can't channel enough power. How much damage is the organs taken? He he's going. He's dead, basically. Gotcha. He's basically dead. He's basically terminally ill. He's about to die. You would need an. You would need. Maybe Odin could do it. Or a Sky Father, or Galactus. Maybe the silver. The Silver Surfer might be able to do it. So maybe shift five hundred. Well, I mean, if you can figure out a way to get a celestial or a cosmic entity level or guy to pull heal him, then yeah, sure. 
I don't think any of us have any of those contacts except for maybe uh, Mr. Fantastic. <laughs> yeah, or or like I said, like Zeus or Odin. Yeah, so maybe Daybreak. alter the timeline, I don't know if your situation would improve. It wouldn't. Um, because this same guy is from the future timeline. Yeah. So, when you alter the yeah. timeline, you either have to do it one of two ways. Either send a guy's brain and soul back and inhabit the original's body, or you send one of these people from a dead timeline or a soon-to-be disappeared timeline back. You know what I mean? In which right. case, it there will be a second version, two versions of you. Ask Victoria how she likes that. Uh, well, in Audie's case, at least one of those two will die soon. Um, nah, I'm pretty sure Thor lived, but that's fine. Thor was hanging out in Asgard, and he's staying there now. Well, he would survive a nuclear blast pretty easily. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, maybe, maybe that'll, that's, that's future, that's homework work. To work on. Because, like, he, how he feels, like, really, like, kind of anxious about it, but he's like, okay, I'm across the fair. Okay, so you guys are headed to Damocles base? Yeah. Alright, you hop on the jet. And actually, you don't just hop on the jet. Daybreak opens up a portal and teleports you to Washington, D.C. You guys step out at Washington, D.C. with the world in front of you. Um, you um, wander around, um, noticing the area uh, is... Um, more uh, rural, rustic, much like England was, Scotland, and um, Reed Richards uh, uses a portable computer uh, to direct you in towards the uh, to the location of the base. And as you do, you notice a. Um, a large, uh, like fortress structure that has been built on top of it, and like a, like a, like a, a high tech castle like structure. To be honest, um, has it got like Latvian symbols and stuff on it? Um, I don't know what Latvian symbols are, but it has like Doctor Doom's. Heraldry yeah, like on banners, yeah, yeah, and you see robots patrolling the fence, the the walls. It's not a fence, um, the walls of the fortress. Um, flying horsemen, uh, dread knights flying around the top, and um, a number of missile towers or racks along the edges. And uh, Reed says, "Good." Still in the same location as last time. Wonderful. So, Mr. Reed, uh, what, what are we dealing with with Dr. Doom? What kind of stuff does he have to try and stop us? Uh, an army of robots and missiles capable of destroying you. Let's hope there aren't any doom bots, I suppose. So, um, looking forward at um, this large fortress in front of you, uh, the place, the location of your next challenge. Um, let me think about this for a second. 
Do I want to try to rush through this? That way we can start with... No. Let's do this next time. We'll do this, and then we'll see how the technology comes. Cool. For next time. There we go. Right. Um, give everybody, um, I don't know, 100 karma.